Jack, I actually ended up printing off some orangutan jokes too. So if you want to hear some jokes. Oh, I love cheesy jokes. Are they cheesy? Right, sweet. I hope um, so. Okay, some were like super, super cheesy. So I didn't end up putting those in, but I got medium cheesies. Okay, good. <laughs> and hey, folks, for those joining us so far, uh, welcome. You're a few minutes early. We're going to get started at five o'clock. So uh, you're going to listen to Jack and I just kind of chumming it up a little bit. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to hear some terrible jokes from Anthony or some really good ones. Let's see. Uh, it's subjective. Okay. Uh, why don't <laughs> leopards, why don't leopards take a shower? I don't know. <laughs> because then they get totally spotless. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Makes you think about that. Wow. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, what do you call a sleepy rainforest? Mm, a tired forest. <laughs> Ooh, close. The pajamas on. <laughs> All right, that one gets the cheesy. That's like an eight out of ten cheesy rating there. <laughs> oh gosh, no, no, you don't. This is this is by far the cheesiest one. It's right. what happens when you annoy a monkey. I'm they, actually they trying go, to think about this. They go bananas. That's I think the worst oh. one. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. Yeah. That almost feels the <laughs> All right, this is my last one. You ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you time to actually think about it. What's okay. orange and sounds like a parrot? Um, a copycat. <laughs> a carrot. <laughs> a carrot. Yeah. What's orange uh, and sounds like, like a parrot? I don't like that. That one upset me. <laughs> Unacceptable answer. <laughs> I don't like that. No. How's it going, folks that are joining us now? We're just getting started here in the next few minutes. We're just uh, getting things booted up. So uh, thanks for joining us early. Good prompt. I like it. Hello, everyone. If you do want to say hello, we have that Q&A button at the very bottom, and uh, you can drop us a line and say hello. If you have any questions before we begin about either tonight in the program or just about us or anyone on the panel or OURF in general, then feel free to send it along. We'll be doing some Q&A sessions throughout the night. And uh, maybe we'll be able to get some time to answer before, just here right now. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. I think uh, I think that silent auction site is getting some is getting some hits right now, which is awesome. Yeah, definitely make sure to check out the silent auction site. Um, you can access that through the page tinyurl.com/no-fuss-fundraiser. You memorize it? Ooh, I did not memorize it. I had it as a link. Let me see if I can just put it in the chat for everybody. Yes, definitely. Let's see. I guess that makes sense. I'm not actually allowed to uh, type in a question because I guess we're the ones that would answer it. So. Yeah, that's true. And answer it on the questions. Well, no dash fuss dash fundraiser. If you don't have that, then send it as a question. We can answer. <laughs> Absolutely. And if one of the hosts, if you're in the background and you can type in the URL to the link, that would be awesome. Yep. Cool. And so, Jack, you're in New Hampshire. What time is it there? I am. Here it's 8 o'clock. We'll be starting at 8 o'clock. Ooh. All right. I like it. Not, not too bad. Not, not the worst ever. Um, no, not too late, which is good. Burning the midnight oil for the orangutans. I love it. <laughs> not oil. Not oil. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. Renewable energy. <laughs> what, what a terrible choice of words for me. Yeah. Yes. Burning the, uh, burning the midnight hydraulic energy. Yep. Hydraulic energy. Yeah. Perfect. All right. We're a minute away from starting the program. So uh, I think we're going to turn off our cameras and get ready to uh, start the program. So All right. stick with us. See you soon, everyone.
Good evening, all. Welcome to Orangutan Republic Foundation's No Fuss Fundraiser. I'm Nikki Macera, OURF's Volunteer Development Director, and I want to thank everyone for attending this evening and inviting us into your homes. OUF is a volunteer-driven organization, and so is this fundraiser. Um, so we might experience some technical difficulties tonight. We're just asking for your patience. It's a good time to get up and grab something to drink, but we'll work on those and get back online as soon as possible. Um, we would love for you to join us for the duration of tonight's event, um, but we also wanna encourage you to pop in and out as you need to. After all, this is a no fuss evening and a recording of tonight's event will be shared with all attendees. Well, since you're here, you're most likely familiar with orangutans and care about their survival. Or maybe you've just recently heard about the issues that surround them and wanna learn more. Well, either way, you're in the right place. Tonight, we are geared up to have a good time and raise money for these exceptional people of the forest and our educational programs that support them. This evening's journey includes unique musical um, performances by volunteers David Blake and Hyla Douglas and her band, The Wild Honeys as well as Adrian Brooke with Sonic Butterfly. And we'll also be showing a music and dance from straight from Indonesia. Um, plus there'll be uh, many chances throughout the night to bid on our rare and unique silent auction items um, and words from our guest speakers, including the general counsel of Indonesia, the Rangatam Project's president, Leif Cox, meteorologist and down to earth host, Dagmar Midcap, and Rainforest Connections founder, Topher White. Throughout the evening, we'll be sharing information on what the OURF is doing and what our orangutan superheroes are working on. Um, so definitely we wanna hear from you throughout the evening. Um, you're encouraged to participate using the Zoom Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, to do so, just please type in your comment or questions um, into that Q&A feature and one of our hosts We'll be happy to make sure that you're heard and that your question is answered. Um, so let's get started. I'd like to introduce you to two of our volunteers and tonight's co-MCs. First, we have OURF Youth Ambassador Jack Dalton, aka the Kid Conservationist. Jack just got back from an amazing eco tour in Indonesia and is going to share highlights from his trip. We're also ecstatic to have environmentalist and adventure host and podcaster, Anthony Porter, AKA the Archer Ninja Warrior. Both of these guys care so much about orangutans and are so inspirational. We are very happy to have them here tonight and I know you're gonna love them. With that said, Jack, I'm turning the microphone over to you. Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you all so much for being here tonight and for your support of OURF. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to making a difference tonight at our event. So thank you for being here and let's have a good time. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jack and I'm known as the Kid Conservationist. I am OURF's Youth Ambassador. And for the past three years, I've been working as an animal activist, public speaker, author, and educational YouTuber, all in the name of saving orangutans and spreading awareness of endangered species. Some of the initiatives that I have are my YouTube channel, which has hundreds of thousands of views from people all around the world and presentations and awareness spreading to also people from all across the globe have collaborated with people from over six, from six continents, which is absolutely incredible. So I'm really excited to be joining you tonight. My most recent initiative is my book, Kawan the Orangutan Lost in the Rainforest, where for every book sold, a tree is planted in the Indonesian rainforest. And in just two years, in just the first two years that this book has been released, over 2,000 copies have been sold so far. So resulting 2,000 trees will be planted because of this book. Actually, just a few weeks ago, I returned from my first ever trip to Indonesia. And while I was there, I had the opportunity to plant some of those trees that my book has raised the funds for and learn about the planting sites. So you'll be hearing all about that trip later on in the evening in my presentation about that. Tonight, I will be your co-MC alongside Anthony Porter, who will be giving his introduction next. Remember, tonight is all about raising, uh, sorry, raising funds 
for OURF and their various conservation initiatives. So this is the final day of orangutan caring week. So let's get that caring and all those funds in to show that we really care for orangutans. This year's theme is orangutan superheroes don't wear capes because they don't need to. <laughs> so in the past, around this time, OURF has hosted their annual Pongo Environmental Awards, which recognizes some of these capeless environmental heroes. This time around, it has been moved to 2023 in the spring, which you'll also hear a bit more about later. Tonight, we'll be having entertainment of all kinds. We'll be having music, dancing, and everything else that you can think of live tonight from all of these orangutan superheroes. So if you wanna learn more about the programs tonight and donate and participate in our silent auction, which has a goal of $10,000, feel free to visit tinyurl.com slash no dash fuss dash fundraiser. Make sure to check it out and let's see who can make the highest bid and win some of those items from the silent auction. Without any further ado, let's have a great night, everybody, and take it away, Anthony. Awesome. I did not know your book sold 2,000 copies. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Anthony Porter. I, I do a lot of conservation work. I run the podcast here at the Orangutan Republic Foundation, and I'm also on the TV show American Ninja Warrior. I'm one of the two-time national finalists on the show, and actually we're just gearing up for uh, the next season soon, so it's pretty fun. Uh, to start off, I want to thank everybody here for being on. The fact that you're on spending your Saturday afternoon with us means a lot to us. We've been working on this for a few weeks here, so just having your presence in this organization and in this program means a lot to us. Uh, so to start off, I wanted to share a little bit about myself and I'm gonna share the screen with little to no technical difficulty, I promise. All right, share the sound. Well, perfect, uh, this is a little slideshow about me. So uh, I am a wilderness leader. I've been a backpacking guide, an environmental host. I've been in education and environmental education specifically for the last six years or so. And I do a lot of athletics uh, on TV and off TV as well. And so one of the items today on the silent auction is archery lessons with yours truly. Uh, so on the top right there, you can see me with my bow and arrow. And then on the second picture is uh, when I was in the national finals. And that was taken actually in Los Angeles at Universal Studios where we were filming the, the semifinals. And then the very bottom is Gary Shapiro and I chumming it up for the Orangutan podcast that you could find on any of your streaming services. Uh, it's a fun time, and Gary is one of the smartest people I've ever met, and it is so fun to talk to him. Uh, so on top of that, uh, I'm a wilderness first responder. I uh, have been to 20 countries, and I'm just genuinely, I feel so lucky to be a part of this group and be a part of the foundation because these folks just do so much work. And uh, I just like talking, but these folks really just love making sure that the orangutans are having their home. So um, everyone uses the skills that they have in order to help the rainforest out. And... On that note, I'm going to share uh, our silent auction page. That way you folks can see what it looks like and we can talk a little bit about some of the options there. Cool, hopefully you folks can see my screen all right. That is charity auction. So you can see the URL up top. We'll get that in the chat for you folks soon. Uh, going through this, uh, you can see that we have quite a few awesome uh, things that have already been bid on, to be honest. And as you scroll down, we see some amazing artwork. Uh, and then Alexander Saunders is also on this call. Alexander Saunders is a, uh, an artist that painted a few of these. We have some, uh, some oil paintings by Mandy Brassa and a lithograph by Dr. Gary Shapiro. And this is signed and framed. A lot of these are signed, which is amazing. And hey, who's that guy? We just met him. And going down, we have a few other amazing items. I mean, heck, we got guitars by the Rolling Stones. Uh, the point of tonight is to have a good time and to recognize the folks that have been spending so much time helping out the conservation of the orangutans and also bidding, getting some donations going. Uh, the point of this is, is to make sure that we can perpetuate all the things that we're doing already in the organization. So going through here, we have some wonderful tote bags. We got some archer lessons by Anthony Porter. Uh, and we have a safari trip. And uh, Gary Shapiro's house in Bali is up for uh, Airbnb if you're ever so slightly interested in, you know, just going to Bali. Uh, it's an awesome opportunity. So without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to introduce our 
first musical performer of the night, which is David Blake. Uh, David Blake has just graduated with environmental science degree, and he does a lot of conservation work in his own right. And right now he's going to show us how he is so amazingly awesome and performs across Southern California as a musician. So David, feel free to take it away. Hi there. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Anthony, for introducing me and Jack for hosting this event. Both you guys are awesome. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm David Blake. Uh, I've been a volunteer with uh, the OURF for about five, six years now, and uh, happy to be here. Just going to be playing a few songs for you guys tonight throughout the night. Uh, this first song is a uh, cover by the Beatles, uh, as my guitar gently weeps, which I just like that song just because it, um, I think it kind of describes the world being a bit in disarray and um, kind of just watching and uh, not really knowing what to do. But yeah, hope you enjoy. sleeping while my guitar gently weeps and I look at the floor and I see that it needs sweeping still my guitar gently weeps I don't know why nobody told you how to control your love And I don't know how Someone controlled you They bought and sold you And I look at the world And I notice it's turning while my guitar gently weeps And with every mistake We must surely be learning Still my guitar gently weeps And I don't know how You were diverted no one alerted you And I don't know how You were converted Someone reverted you As I watch from the wings At the play you are staging Still my guitar gently weeps And as I'm sitting here Doing nothing but aging Will my guitar gently very much. Wow. I think I speak for everyone when I say that was amazing. That was really beautiful, David. If like, we could have like a clapping emoji going on, we would, but that was amazing. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, everyone's clapping right now. I guarantee you. <laughs> that was uh, such a great performance, as always. <laughs> Your voice is so beautiful, David. Really great job. It's terrifying, really, that someone could be that talented. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Jack, did you want to uh, talk about our next little intro where you uh, talk about the Indonesia yes. Consulate? Yeah, next up we have the General Council of Indonesia, Saad Krishnawan, who I had the opportunity to meet last year at uh, last year's 8th Annual Pongo Environmental Awards that OURF hosted at the General Consulate of Indonesia. And I got to meet Saad Krishnawan there. 
and he welcomed me with open arms into the Indonesian community. While we were there, I got to give a speech about my work with orangutans and conservation. And for that speech and for my work, he gave me a certificate of acknowledgement, which I keep up year round in my living room. It's one of my most prized possessions and to him, I am forever grateful. So next stop, let's hear a talk from him. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, it is an honor for me to be present in today's Orangutan Republic Foundation No Fast Fundraiser event. The Orangutan species is part of the valuable kaleidoscope Indonesia's biodiversity heritage. They are global treasures whose existence has been threatened. We are thankful that with the aid of organizations such as Dr. Gary Safiros, we could slow and hopefully halt their path towards their extinction. Our fight to keep the species thriving is an inheritance for the next generation, should never be a solitary one. It takes a joint effort of the Indonesian government entities, preservation NGOs, as well as dedicated volunteers to save the magnificent orangutan species. Therefore, on behalf of the Indonesian government, we would like to once again pledge our support for efforts in preserving the orangutan. In cooperation with such organizations such as Dr. Gary's as well as other government and non-government entities. Be assured that Indonesia is committed to create a more sustainable ecosystem for the orangutan and the betterment of our planet. Again, congratulations and may today's fundraisers be successful. Terima kasih. Yes, Tarima Kasi, uh, General Counsel. Thank you so much, Mr. Chris Nguyen. What a wonderful speech and such an honor to have him be a part of this event tonight. Again, he is such an inspiration to me and it was an honor to meet him last year. Next up, we have Gary, who will be sharing some basic information about Orangutan Republic. Um, Gary is, of course, the founder of OURF and he is one of my good friends and mentors. So. I welcome you to the stage, Gary. Thank you, thank you, Jack, so much. And I want to also um, remind everybody that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Pawawan, who, who we affectionately call him, has been very, very supportive of our organization. I really appreciate his providing this uh, uh, his speech to kind of open up the formal program. And uh, I want to thank you, Jack and Anthony, for also serving as OMCs. I want to thank all of the um, attendees here today. Um, let me just share my screen. Now, thanks are always in order, but um, and we'll be doing some of that a little bit later. But for those who do not know, the Orangutan Republic Foundation started in 2004 by my wife, Ingriani and I, so she's actually a co-founder with me. We started as the Orangutan Republic Education Initiative, which was a, a project under the group Social and Environmental Entrepreneurs. Uh, it's a basically gave us fiscal status to, to, to start on the ground running and do our programs. But in um, 2007, we got our tax exempt status and became a publicly supported organization with the same mission, which is to save orangutans in Indonesia through conservation education and other projects, which call people to action. And we, in 2016, we partnered with the Orangutan Project to synergize our efforts and our common mission. So this is what makes OURF unique. It's, you know, while we, financially support boots on the ground conservation and orangutan rescue and reintroduction programs through TOP USA. We also, our focus is investing in the future by promoting the education and training of local Indonesian people and organizations who are and will become the stewards and protectors of orangutan populations, their rainforest homes and the biodiversity that is found there. Now we realize the critically endangered orangutans, rainforests, and biodiversity are at risk of being lost 
if not properly managed. So we also call attention to the plight of the great red apes through our outreach programs during special days throughout the year, including this week's orangutan caring week. We do our work with the global support of volunteers to assist in the many functions an organization like ours requires, such as content creation, social media, fundraising, and program oversight. And tonight, we'll take a look at some of what we've been doing with our programs, the impact our investments have made, and acknowledge the volunteers who have supported our organization. And I also encourage you to visit our website, rangutanrepublic.org, to learn more. We couldn't do our work without funding, so we thank you. We thank you for purchasing a ticket, encourage you to go further by making a donation or by bidding on one or more of the items we have on our online silent auction. So take out your smartphones, open up or open up another tab on your browser and visit, visit charity auctions today to see the items we're offering. A quick link is tinyurl.com slash no fuss bids, or you can take your camera on your phone and click that QR code. Well, thank you once again for supporting us. And now I'm going to ask our co-MC Anthony Porter to, again, maybe review a few more of the uh, items on the silent auction website and uh, point out some great items being offered. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Gary Shapiro. Uh, he, he is humble and he's put a lot of work into this and a lot of work into the program. and. Uh, it's, it's just amazing to see someone with so much dedication towards this cause, and it, it inspires a lot of us to keep going. So thank you, Dr. Gary Shapiro. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what we have for offer on our site. Uh, so as you mentioned earlier, we have some uh, unique tote bags that are available. We have fridge magnets. I have one of these, and I have it right next to my door frame every time I leave my room just to make sure that I know that there's a little orangutan looking after me. Uh, I love it. Going down the list, we have some great packages, especially with the holiday season coming up. You're thinking to yourself, maybe I want to donate less this year because I have other things to buy, but you can kill two birds with one stone. Getting these packages for family and friends as well as yourself is a great way to do this. Uh, all of these packages have bids that start off significantly lower than what they're actually priced at uh, because we, we want people to enjoy and have these kinds of experiences. So going through these, uh, the Mob Museum, general admission tickets to the Mob Museum in uh, Vegas is something that's pretty unique in this area. The Red Ape Retreat in Kuta Bali, which is Dr. Gary Shapiro's uh, uh, other residence where he rents that out for folks that are interested in checking out the area. And it's a wonderful biologically diverse area. As someone coming from a, a scientific uh, animal background, you can't get cooler than Bali and, and the Southeast Asian area. So I highly recommend it. If you haven't been there yet, and we're talking about orangutans, it, it's worth checking out. Going on the list even more, I'm going to sign guitar by Paul McCartney. Uh, you, can't, you can't miss some of these amazing, amazing options. Signed Kobe Bryant limited edition uh, photo displays, Michael Jordan's limited edition photo display, Pearl Jam, if you're a 90s guy. Uh, I, I'm a 90s guy, so Pearl Jam's good. David Bowie, absolutely. So there's plenty of things for any demographic, any generation, really that you're interested in looking at, um, especially how big Marvel is right now. As Stan Lee signed Marvel poster, I mean, I think they're severely underbidding this. This is a great opportunity to get something for uh, any of your family, friends that are geeks about Marvel like myself. It's, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, and as I'm scrolling up here, uh, Jack Dalton, do you have any uh, specific ones that you've been looking at that are interesting to you? I think you definitely pointed out that Marvel one. You were calling me out there. Oh yeah, Good. yeah, um, yeah. That's definitely something I've had my eye on. I too am a big Marvel fan. I've watched all the movies in order, so yeah. Um, no, definitely some great op options up uh, for auction tonight. And Anthony, I believe you have an item too, right? You're the archery lessons. Yeah, so it's kind of funny because uh, they, they said, "Hey, what can you bring to the table?" And like, honestly, I, I teach archery lessons. I'd be happy to do that. Uh, and so there's my uh, little professional archery instruction. 
Uh, it'll be a three hour course at whatever uh, pace that you'd like. And hey, if you're far away, I'd be happy to set up a time to chat to just get the right equipment going and, and to get that going. So uh, that's what I'd love to offer. Thanks for pointing that out, Jack. And on yeah. your note, you've got a signed book by you. And I do. So this is, is a, this is a copy of Kuwami Orangutan, Lost in the Rainforest. It's my children's book. It's a great book. And also along with that is meet and greet with myself. So if you want to come and say hi to me, I'm always welcome to a chat with some fellow orangutan uh, how do we say it? Fanatics. Um, fanatics. I'm definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely a orangutan fanatic. I think that's the good, a good word for it. Um, I was thinking enthusiasts, but fanatics. Enthusiasts, I yeah, dig that it. works too. Kind of dig it. Uh, well, awesome. Feel free to scour this through the site. There's uh, three pages worth of, of materials that you cannot miss. These are yeah. awesome opportunities. You can see we got some bidders and it's all anonymous. You don't have to uh, pronounce what you're uh, going for. Uh, but yeah, we've already got some great bids so far. Thank you, folks. That that does mean a lot to us, and it sees that we're doing the right thing. So keep it up. Uh, and if you saw this other tab up here, I was going to put this up when I was uh, previously uh, introducing myself. But it's, it was a clip of me doing American Ninja Warrior. So if you saw that tab up there, I apologize for not playing that earlier. But uh, yeah, feel free to look me up later. Um, cool. Well, sweet. Next on our list, we're going to uh, talk about our volunteer recognition sites and then uh, go a little bit into Becky Keller's ed app presentation. So if you folks want to check out some of what our volunteers have been up to, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and get the next folks on to talk about volunteer recognition. And uh, did we already do that with Gary? We could skip uh, straight to Becky if that's uh, something that we can go to. No, I'd actually, uh, we're gonna back up because I think it's time for Jack to talk about his trip to Indonesia. Yes. You didn't do that yet. Yes. Let's hear it. Yes. I can't wait to share with all of you about my recent experience and first ever time in Indonesia. So let's jump straight into that. Thank you so much, Anthony. Really looking forward to the silent auction tonight, everyone. All right. So let me just get my screen sharing up here. Wrong tab. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, let me share with you a bit about my recent trip to Indonesia. I actually haven't gotten the opportunity to talk too much about this with really anyone. I've done a couple posts on social media with some pictures and some highlights, but you guys are going to be some of the first people to really hear a lot about this trip and more in depth about some of my favorite parts. So, of course, the first part of this was seeing orangutans in the wild. This was personally my first time seeing orangutans in the wild. And as an orangutan fanatic, as I like to say, um, definitely it was great seeing them in the wild for the very first time. And while I've seen them in zoos, it was a completely different experience seeing them out in the wild, testing their weight on the branches before bending the trees, bending those sticks, just to reach to the next one, just to get there and swing through the forest and explore their homes. Um, definitely the biggest part of seeing orangutans in the wild was the babies. The babies were actually, there was a baby orangutan named Rowan, who was the one who first made me fall in love with orangutans in the first place. So seeing them in the wild was really, it brought back kind of what what I stood for and why I was doing all of this conservation work and what led me to the point that I was in Indonesia watching these red apes swinging through the trees. I mean, that's not an experience that many people get at all, never mind a 12 year old boy who loves orangutans. So it was really an incredible experience seeing orangutans in the wild for the very first time. Next up, uh, I want to share with you about my donation to schools with my children's book. So this was one of my favorite parts because I got to meet kids ages 12 and 13 who went to school in the rainforest. So they go to a school called the Looser School, which is placed in the rainforest. So they spend most of their day learning in the outdoors. So I got to go and I got to donate 50 copies of my children's book, Come on the Orangutan Lost in the Rainforest, and a resulting 50 trees planted to these kids, as well as $500 so that they could get more school supplies and sports supplies. So part of that day was we got to join them in their morning exercise routine and 
we got to go to their classroom and talk to them a bit more about my book and my conservation initiatives, what got me started, and how I ended up in Indonesia. So this was uh, definitely a great experience for me, and it was really neat meeting all these kids. Now, not too far down the road, there was tree planting. So I got to go in and I got to plant trees, which was definitely something that felt really rewarding. You know, planting trees after working to help raise the funds for those trees after, for so long, it was really, um, really illuminating. You know, it really made me feel like what I was doing was helping to make a difference. And not just me, but also all of the people who are working towards conservation initiatives. And those orangutan superheroes who don't wear capes. Now, speaking of orangutan superheroes, in the top left, that's a picture of the hands of all the people that I got to go on a tour with and our hands after planting those trees in the ground. It was such a great experience. On the right, on the right hand side there, you can see me with Lexi Yang, who's the person who, she's a zookeeper, and she was the one who first taught me about orangutans and how they were critically endangered. She was the one who first inspired me to take action to want to help orangutans. So she is an orangutan superhero. So without her, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have the opportunity to MC this virtual event and help to raise some funds to help protect orangutans. On that bottom left, you can see another orangutan superhero. One of those people working on the ground, one of just many people who work in the field on the ground in Indonesia to help plant those trees and to help protect wild orangutans. And like I said, there's so many of these people such as Panut, the founder of Orangutan Information Center, who's been working for over 25 years to help protect wild orangutans. He is such an inspiration and it was an honor to meet him and get to have a sit down conversation with him while we were in Indonesia. On the bottom left, that's, um, that was a guy named Sabar. Sabar is an amazing person, not only like just a really nice guy, but he also was the person who designed that looser school located in the looser ecosystem in Sumatra. Sabar was the one who learned pretty much all from YouTube about how to design with bamboo architecture, and he was the one who designed the classrooms in that school. So it was an honor to meet him as a part of this tour. And of course, on that bottom right hand, there's all those people working behind the scenes to help protect orangutans each and every day by cutting down the palm oil trees and replanting the rainforest that was once there so that it can hopefully regrow to be what it once was today. Now, part of what we learned about while we were there was how the system of planting the trees. So first they plant the fast growth ones, which creates shade and that kills the weeds. So that was interesting to learn about because you'd think they grow the slow growth ones first so that they had you know, more time to grow, but they actually plant fast growth ones so that the slow growth ones aren't killed by the weeds. And then once the weeds die off, the slow growth trees they plant. And within four years, animals are already starting to return to the area. It's really impressive. And I could talk all day about what we did in Indonesia. I mean, maybe not just one day. I could talk for weeks. <laughs> and we were there for two weeks. And it was an experience of a lifetime that I got to experience. And I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to go there as a 12 year old who loves orangutans. So it was something that really showed me just how incredible it was, just how incredible orangutans are and how many people are working to help them. But also it showed me how big the issue was because driving not only through Borneo, but also Sumatra, seeing the devastation all the palm oil, just driving for hours in a straight line, all through palm oil plantations, which used to be rainforest, which used to be completely wild. And now it's just palm oil for hours and hours and hours. And I think it really showed me how big the issue is. So this trip kind of brought me down knowing how big the issue was, but it also gave me a lot of hope knowing how many people are working to combat the issues and help orangutans. So for, for that trip, it was a trip of a lifetime. So I've definitely gone over my time limit, but 
it's worth it. I'm so happy that I was able to share my experience in Indonesia with all of you today. And uh, next up, we have Leif Cox, who is the founder of the Orangutan Project, which, as Gary mentioned, is OURF's parent organization. OURF is the US chapter for them. So next up, we have a pre-recorded message from him. Hi, this is Leif Cox from the Orangutan Project. We're living in the most important decade of human history. And this is extremely important because the human species, Homo sapiens, have been around for about 200,000 years. And if we lived in any other time in the past, we wouldn't have had made much difference. But if we don't make strategic and meaningful action in the next decade, it will determine whether future generations will have a recoverable planet to grow and prosper on. Also importantly, most people living on a planet today are either too impoverished or live in authoritarian regimes where they have little to no power that affect the meaningful change. So there's only a few amount of us, a proportion of us on this planet today, living in the most important decade in human history that has the ability to make the change necessary. So you both have the privilege and obligation to be a small set of people living in the most important times. Now, during this most important decade, we have to effectively eliminate the majority of fossil fuels to mitigate um, climate change, move to a more compassionate plant-based diet to remove the methane um, from the atmosphere. But in addition to those two things, the third thing we have to do, and it's actually a low-hanging fruit, it's the most cost-effective way of mitigating climate change, is save the world's rainforest. Now, I also say we've got the next 10 years to save orangutans from extinction. That doesn't mean in 10 years time there won't be orangutans or forest left, but the populations will be too small and fragmented to survive, and the rainforest will be too small and fragmented to survive in the long term. Because the feedback loops that we'll experience on the global climate change, locally in isolated rainforests and in the populations of orangutans that exist in the remaining fragment forest. So we've got the next 10 years to turn this around and they're all interlinked for good reason. Orangutans, their rainforests and the health of this planet. So I appeal to all to you to contribute to this no fund fundraiser from the Orangutan Republic Foundation, a wonderful organization which I have the privilege of being with involved with and been working closely with the leader of, of the organization, Gary Shapiro, which is one of the shining lights of Orangutan conservation in our lifetimes. So um, please give generously and, and support the wonderful work of the Orangutan Republic Foundation an important key partner for the orangutan project and many other organizations seeking to save the orangutan at the same time save the economic and environmental future of the country of indonesia and in turn doing the most cost effective meaningful way we can mitigate climate change and leave to future generations a recoverable planet to live and prosper on thank you What a great message. Yeah, what a, what a great message from a great guy. So I encourage you all to check out the great work that he's doing um, to help support orangutans in conservation. Definitely. Absolutely. And uh, on another note, folks, uh, there's a Q&A button at the very bottom of your screen. If you want to ask us some questions or just drop a line, you could do that both with your name in it, or you could do it completely anonymously uh, to just kind of take the pressure off you. I'd love to see some uh, engagement if you folks want to ask any questions about what you've seen so far, what we've got in the program, or any specifics yeah. about the organization. Yeah. We'll be having some uh, Q&A sessions throughout the night, so make sure to send in those questions, send in any comments that you may have, and we'll be happy to uh, share a bit about that and answer any questions that you may have. Now, next up, we have some, next up, we have some music from the Wild Honeys. Yes. Uh -oh. Yes. Go ahead, Anthony. Awesome. Yeah. Let's check this out. Thank you everyone for being here for the No Fuss fundraiser for the Rang Utan Republic Foundation. 
We are the Wild Honeys, and this first song is called Sweet and Shiny Eyes, written by Nan O'Brien. One, two, three, one. You're sweet and shiny eyes are like the stars above your head, like the That's so fun to listen to. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I had a good time. Somebody asked me, they're like, what's that person doing sitting down? They're just hitting the chair. I'm like, oh no, that's the box drum. That's a that's a, a vibe right there. A lot of folks bring those box drums around when they can't bring a whole set. And I love the the atmosphere that the box drum brings into it for sure. Yeah, um, that's cool. Um, well, perfect. So next on our agenda, we're gonna bring on Gary and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the next Pongo Awards and our friend Dagmar. Uh, who is a meteorologist in Southern California here, and how those things collide, and a little bit of the adventure that Gary had with her. Um, Gary, are you are you popping on in a second here? We can talk I'm a little bit about. Already. Oh, there he is. I'm right below you two guys, good looking guys, <laughs> and uh, hi, uh, hi, Gary. Uh, hi down there, Gary. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Hey, you. <laughs> you guys are doing a great job, by the way. I just want to thank you for. I mean, I'm just really enjoying listening to both of you. We could probably do this whole thing with you, you two just carrying in the whole show. But, uh, you know, we've got a lot of great content coming in from others. Um, and I wanted just to mention before we show the video, uh, Dagmar Midcap, who is a meteorologist for NBC in San Diego, and also a, a wildlife journalist. She does a lot of traveling to put together programs for NBC. Um, and she was planning and she had planned to go to Indonesia for quite some time and she was able to do so a couple of months ago. Uh, I had a chance of course to meet with her and talk to her about the possibility of seeing orangutans but on this particular trip she could only make it to South Sumatra and visit the Tambling Wildlife Nature uh, conserve, Conservation and uh, this location is part of what uh, one of our Pongo winners last year, Tommy Winata has established and has put millions and millions of his own personal dollars into to turn around a degraded area and turn it into a, a magnificent example of a private wildlife reserve. 
It's actually connected to the Bukit Barisan uh, National Park. So animals living in this private reserve can migrate to the north and actually become part of the fauna and flora of that area. So what I'd like to do um, right now is to play Dagmar's video. Unfortunately, she's having a bit of technical problems joining us. So uh, John, if you could play that video. And this is only the third time this year they've released these endangered green sea turtles. They've been captured from a fisherman's net. Tambling has purchased them from the fishermen for the purposes of rehabilitating and releasing them back into the wild. And I'm blessed to be able to help. Here we go. Mutual friend, Mr. Gary Shapiro. Oh, yeah. Yes, he, yes. He has been here together with the. Uh, he was with Muli's release. Uh, yeah, when the Muli release. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thinks very highly. Actually, of I'm, I should see him last year. Yes, yes, yes. But on that time, it's still pandemic, very high. But Jakarta. he'll come see you soon. So he has asked me to prevent, to present you and provide you with this very special award. It is the Ponga Award, oh. and it is an award given to people who have uh, really the highest regard for nature and have shown us how to conserve our planet. So I present you now, Mr. Tommy Lunata, with the Ponga Award. Oh, thank you, planet. thank you, tell to David uh, Viro. This is very appreciated. Well, that was uh, Dagmar's visit. As she mentioned, I had been out there before uh, with my wife a number of years ago and had a chance to experience the beauty of tumbling. And uh, it's being developed into a, a resort for um, people to go out and to see the, the, the biodiversity out there. So um, as mentioned, we, we gave uh, Mr. Tommy Winata an award last year. And it was just wonderful to see Dagmar being able to go out and make the presentation. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really good. Um, perhaps now we can turn it back over to Jack and Anthony to talk yeah. a little bit more about where we're standing now in our fundraiser. Actually, Gary, before we do that, um, Dagmar asked me to, to ask you to talk about Muli the tiger and the release of that tiger. Right, right. Well, we happened to be asked to go out there um, during a time where they were planning on doing this this tiger release. And Mulia, the the tiger, was apparently captured because it was. I think she was trapped in a net and um, was rehabilitated. Uh, they put a tracking collar on her. Uh, they worked with Panthera, a, an organization in the United States, uh, to help bring the kind of um, science and wildlife conservation necessary to properly manage uh, tigers. And so again, this is part of the uh, knowledge transfer going on from places like uh, America to Indonesia to help improve the um, understanding of how to handle these, these uh, animals. So uh, we happened to be asked to come out. Uh, we made the, the journey across uh, from Jakarta to, to Tambli. We we saw the uh, Anak Krakatoa, the uh, the uh, the son of of the original Krakatoa explosion, and of course you saw in the video one of the lighthouses that survived the tsunami that had actually hit the coastline of Lampung or South Sumatra, which is where Tambling is located. And so we were there. We were able to visit the area, and we saw 
when uh, Mulia was released um, from the cage and uh, it was a big, big deal. In fact, the highest member of the Indonesian military uh, came out to be part of the release. And, and so that was really, really special. They don't do it very often, but it was really an exciting uh, opportunity we had. Okay, back to you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, that guy's like, I can't be there, but I have to tell Gary to tell about the, the tiger story. So I'm, I'm glad that happened. Uh, perfect. All right. Well, uh, Jack, did you want to share your screen this time? And I was going to say, I can share this here. We have, this is our durianometer or durianometer, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is showing how much money we have currently raised right now. It's currently at $6,105. Wow. We're already halfway there to the, uh, to our goal of 10,000. Woo. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. I almost got it. Incredible. Uh, and the durian fruit was motivated by uh, Gary, who absolutely loves durian fruits. So you can thank him for the meter of durians. But uh, that is amazing. Thank you, folks. We've seen the activity going on on the website. Uh, thank you so much. Let's keep it up and get things going to get to that $10,000 goal. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. And for those of you wondering, this orangutan here is named Siswi. And the durian fruits are feeding her. So the more durians, the happier she gets. So I don't know. More durians, happy orangutan. Don't you want to make the orangutans happy? <laughs> no, sounds sounds like uh, don't want to get in too much trouble with this. We hear more durians. Know. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we can flip over to the auction page here and just share a bit more about some of the top um, top uh, donations items. today. Yeah, yeah the items. So currently, seems like this beautiful painting here. Wow. Gosh. So that's by Alexandra Saunders, who is actually with us tonight. What a beautiful, beautiful painting or print. Great. Yeah, we were doing a, uh, a practice a couple of weeks ago for this, and we were talking about some of her paintings. And she goes, I'm sorry, what? And she was literally painting in the middle of our meeting because that's just what she does. And you can see why it's absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Uh, Alexandra is very talented. Amazingly talented, absolutely. And uh, Alexandra and I met last year at the Pongo Awards. Uh, they're super fun. If you folks haven't uh, had a chance to go to a Pongo Awards ceremony yet, I highly recommend it. It's 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 worth checking out. Oh, well, looks like the board game has a bid. Oh, check that nice. out. I actually have my eye on that one. That might be my mom. I was trying to convince her into getting that for me. <laughs> check, I'll, I'll I might outbid you on that. Oh, yeah, that sounds awesome. I might outbid you for that one. Oh, come on, Anthony. <laughs> we'll see. We'll play see. nice with me. Whatever. It's for orangutans. <laughs> You'll just have to play with me sometime. All right. Oh, heck uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, a refrigerator magnet. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Good choice. <laughs> I think Anthony talked you into that one, whoever bid on that. And oh, then I love it. This one is actually a really good deal. I was looking at this one earlier. This is two twenty five for a seven day, six night stay at the Red Ape Retreat in Bali. I mean, that's a great price for Bali. I know we just returned from our trip to Indonesia and Bali is a beautiful place. So definitely make sure to check this out if you can. I mean, why not, right? It's a uh, great yeah. definitely make sure to bid on that i mean that's they, a steal. that's a steal they've put me. a lot of work into it and uh gary uh, correct me if i'm wrong you're like a 4.9 super host on uh on airbnb is that right well you know unfortunately we lost our super host status because of what? covid yeah well oh, gave a, wow. a little bit of time to have it but we didn't have people in there so but we're getting mm. close to getting it back that is awesome. Well, you can see it's going to be in great shape and it's a great place to stay. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much, Gary. And of course, thank you to your wife. Uh, thank you to the both of you for this amazing opportunity at such a great price. Yeah. She's the one who actually decorates it and makes it so beautiful. Um, I just help out with the Airbnb site. <laughs> well, you have a lot of other stuff on your plate too. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's Understand. Great. 
Gary awesome. does some great work with OURF and orangutans. So definitely big, big props to him for everything that he does. Without him, we wouldn't be here tonight. Thank oh, you. Absolutely. And, and I'm so impressed by what we've raised so far and we're just getting started. So everybody, Keep feeding Siswi the durians. We want to see that durian meter go up. And I, I got to let people know that during uh, Siswi was, I, I actually was there the day she was born, September 9th, 1978, wow. in the jungle of in Tanjaputi National Park in Camp Leaky. And I, I was the one who named her. In fact, she's the only orangutan I've ever named when I was out there. And I've seen lots and lots of orangutans during my time out there. So she's, uh, she's really a special uh, person of the forest. And uh, here she is doing a no fuss hat uh, yeah. for the no fuss fundraiser. So really, really happy to see her here. Okay. Yes. No fuss theme, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, perfect. Uh, well, thank you folks so much for donating and uh, let's keep it up. Let's keep things moving because uh, it's it's for the best cause there is. And uh, there, there are a lot of times just causes that you're like, yeah, I'll donate to that one. This is so all encompassing. I mean, it's not just orangutans that that this is going to look after. I mean, conservation of, of land, of the rainforest, the effect spans us across the entire planet. So uh, as much as these guys are, are a great symbol, uh, they are they are a just the segue to overall planetary conservation. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're donating tonight. But awesome. Next on our list, we have uh, a little talk by uh, Gary to discuss some of the volunteer recognition sites of uh, some of our volunteers that have done some great work. And Jack and I have gotten to know a few of these volunteers over the last year or so. And it's been, I mean, for me, it's been amazing. What about you, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, OURF knows the people to, uh, to help out orangutans and everyone who helps orangutans. Personally, I haven't met a single conservationist who is an orangutan fanatic, as I say, <laughs> um, who doesn't, isn't just one of the nicest people who I've ever met. And I think a perfect example of that is Gary. So yeah, let's, uh, let's hear it for the orangutan volunteers. Take it away, Gary. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Um, I'm going to, mentioned that of course the um here we go if this works yeah okay um put on my glasses so i can read this i want to make sure i get everything right um as i mentioned earlier the orangutan republic is volunteer powered and depends on the time and talent of numerous caring people who support our mission, working in co committees or on their own, supporting the management of programs, projects, campaigns, fundraisers, and more. Now, while we have always had volunteers helping us domestically and overseas, in recent years, we formalized the program and have a dozen committees and over 50 volunteers on our roster. Now, some are inactive because they're taking a break, Others work occasionally, but we also have dedicated volunteers who consistently have supported us day in and day out, week after week. So first, let me just thank and express my appreciation to all our volunteer supporters, past and present, including our governing and advisory board, Susan, Cheryl, Liz, Eric, Robert, Leif, Max, Parveen, Hyla, John, and Gregory. Our committee chairs, our volunteer coordinator, Eddie Cariati, tonight's co-MCs, Anthony Porter and Jack Dalton, and previous, previous MCs like Ed Begley Jr. And, and Fritz Coleman, and everyone over the many years who came to the early days to set up our canopy at the Santa Monica Farmers Market and use the numerous and the numerous outreach events we would hold around town as well as the many fundraisers we've held over the years. You know, there are so many of those people and so many intrepid volunteers who've made the journey to Sumatra and Borneo, I'd like to thank, uh, as part of their uh, working vacation. And I, and I really can't forget to thank all the volunteers who helped us during Orangutan Caring Week, including Holly Drayluck, as well as our team here at, uh, that helped set up the No Fuss fundraiser. So 
So thank you very much for that. But I want to also um, talk about those individuals who and acknowledge several extraordinary people who have shown sustained participation throughout the year, despite the fact they all work and have their own busy lives to lead. Over the year, our organization has been afforded the talent, skills, and leaderships of Nikki Masara, Becky Keller, David Blake, John Page, and Liz Varnhagen. Now, while I could and I should name others, I wanted to particularly call attention to this special group who have taken on big assignments and have supported us brilliantly. So, now, Nikki serves as development director and helps out the foundation admirably on multiple projects and programs since coming on board. She helped craft the calendar of this year's events, activities, and campaigns, which provided a roadmap for us to focus on and stay on track. The development committee has been meeting almost weekly thanks to Nikki's leadership. I can't say enough about how dependable she's been. Thank you, Nikki, for all you have been doing, including serving as one of our panelists tonight. Now, Becky Keller is someone I've known for many decades and who embraces conservation education with a passion. As OURF's education chair, she's been leading the foundation's online education project about orangutans, which will be a wonderful and engaging online educational tool for different grade levels. You'll hear more about this exciting project in just a few minutes from Becky herself. A few minutes ago, you heard David. He continues to amaze me with his passion for conservation and the wilderness and making a difference in the world. And of course, he has many talents and being creative in many, many ways, especially in the music field. Now you heard him earlier and he'll play a little bit later on. David's visited Sumatra of a number of years ago to deliver funds he raised to the organization we were supporting in the field back then. So thank you, David. John Page has been a volunteer for the Orangutan Republic since its beginning and helped develop our first website. He also volunteered to support the IT functions at the 2006 Sumatran Orangutan Education Conference and Workshop and Summit held in Maidan, Sumatra. John helped me rework and improve the Orangutan Caring Week website recently. He's working behind the scenes tonight, making sure our webinar runs smoothly and we'll be making a presentation later on. Thank you, John, for all of your volunteer support. Finally, I want to recognize a dedicated board member, Liz Varnhagen, who has been an all-around volunteer for many years. She's both an active member who helps administer our CSEP program, and she donates significantly to our fundraising efforts. Because of her interest in Indonesia, Liz has made visits to Java and Sumatra to help conduct oversight activities on behalf of OURF, and she'll be joining us in December to visit Borneo for her first time. Liz is a valued member of OURF who provides her critical thinking skills to our efforts. Once again, I wanted to just thank all our volunteers. You know, I know I can't name everybody, but uh, I appreciate everything that everybody does in support of our mission. And I invite other people who are listening who might want to become one of our volunteers. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Gary. I and mean, you can't say uh, enough about Gary himself as, as the, the spearhead of this whole operation. So from all the volunteers, I mean, thank you for really making it possible for us to have an outlet to make a difference. It's my pleasure. Uh, speaking of outlets, uh, we have uh, a very cool one that uh, Becky Keller has helped head. Um, and basically, this is an, an educational app that will help span our effect into the digital realm. Uh, and it's been really fun to help create that, that with her. And she has just been amazing creating that. So Becky, if you wanna take it away and share your screen to talk about some of the amazing things that you've done so far. Hi, I let me get this just set up here just so I can um, get the 
the Zoom going. All right, so I am so excited to be here. This is actually close to my heart. I love the fact that we have decided to do something for education um, for young people. And I'm gonna take you through some of these things right now, just so that you can see a little bit of what we have for the different age groups. If you look on the, the top, we've got the, the four different grade levels that we're doing an app for. Um, and this is an app so that we can help young people learn more about um, orangutans. So if we have ki kindergarten through second grades, third through fifth grade, sixth through eighth grade and ninth through 12th grade. So we want to get, you know, they all learn at different um, times and, and ways. So we want to um, approach each one differently. So um, the first one we're going to look at is the third through fifth graders. Now, this is great. I love I love the fact that we've got our, our two co-hosts that are spearheading this thing. They are so awesome. They're so inspirational. So we've got Jack and um, Anthony both doing some presentations. So if you look on the left side, I want I want everybody just to to see kind of what we're working on. We've been working on this several months and we're we're being picky, I guess, or maybe I'm being picky on it because it's so important to me. I have I have three young children that have gone since they were four years old. I've taken them to Borneo and I've seen them just just absorb all this information and then just want to learn more about it. And so these things that we've got, I'm going to start you off with um, orangutan. So we're just going to go through just a couple of the 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 presentations so that you can see kind of what our young people are going to get at different age groups. So we're going to start first with this orangutan um, that's just going to go off and then we're going to hear from Jack in this moment. Jack. I'm the kid conservationist. I'm the youth ambassador for Orangutan Republic Foundation. Welcome to our learning courses on EDAP, all about orangutans. In this lesson, you'll be learning about orangutan species, their physical features, where they live, and more. We'll play some games and take some quizzes throughout so we can have some fun with our orangutan pals. Let's get started! The word orangutan means person of the forest in the Malay language. Now these intelligent great apes are one of our closest living relatives in the animal kingdom. In fact, we share 97% of our genes with them. Now I personally learned how bright these animals are when I was teaching them sign language in the jungles of Borneo in the 1970s. There was one very special orangutan named Princess. Like so many other young orangutans, Princess was an orphan. Her mother was killed by poachers who were trying to sell her into the illegal pet trade. Orangutan mothers and their offspring share a very special bond that lasts about eight years, and no mother willingly gives up her child. After I met Princess, she actually adopted me as her dad. We communicated in sign language, and she went on to learn nearly 40 signs in two years. Their intellect and close relationship to our species hasn't protected them from being threatened. Now, what's really important about this, you know, Gary, I mean, he's, he's such a field researcher and he's gone out and collected all this information. But what's really important is that we bring it back and now put it down at a level that young people of all ages can take that in and become the advocates and the fanatics, as Jack said, of, of the future of tomorrow. So what we've done is what they they will have a video that kind of catches their attention. And then, then we have a slide. So this is what we call a, a teaching slide. And it basically just picks out the information that perhaps was in the video before. And so we give that to them again because there's different senses that young people will use to, to learn different things. And so after that, then we'll have a quiz. And so in this particular one, so it, we, we try to make it simple, but yet successful. So in this particular one, it, it comes it comes up, orang means, and then you can put in um, a person, and then you, utan means, and then you put in forest. And so when they do that, then they'll get a success sign after that. 
Okay, and then there's another, so then there's sometimes another slide. So then why should we care? So we give them some information and then hopefully they'll think about that a little bit and say, well, gosh, why, why is it important? Why should I as a third through fifth grader um, be, in, be interested in learning about orangutans? Well, this is what we, we try to, to give them that information. And so then there's, there's another little quiz. And so like on this particular one, why learn about orangutans? So orangutans disperse seeds and create more trees. So it's important to keep that keep that ecosystem going on and that rainforest in good in good shape. So then after um, so so the other thing. So we've given them some learning, and so now we want some more ways to learn. And so we have action, and then we have more ways to learn. Now this video, this is really unique because this video was actually the, the number one winner a couple of years ago in the, um, the art and design thing. And it was, it was this was created by um, two young people, Patricia um, Ratu and Mohamed um, Perdanto. And they're from Indonesia. And we're really glad because we want this app to really go global so that the Indonesian students can use it and then English speaking students can use it too. So we're going to play a little bit about this because this is a really good um, video that that they produced for uh, for the Orangutan Republic and we end up using it in in the app. There's a little orangutan living in the rainforest with his mother he is in place then takes his rest. If he is wounded mom will pick him up and give him love and He's a big boy, he leaves his mom to start a brand new quest The unreal guy swings up and down with joy and finds a tree He drops seeds of trees as he roams from his glass He sees the beautiful waterfall from the grass As he recollects his mother and his home The forest was so lush and at its best to my home, I'm now in distress. Cause to the ignoramus, I'm just a pest. Oh, what, what a mess. mess. Now, that is a really good way, not just to have, you know, something catchy tune in the app, but it's also a way of giving feedback to, to young people that, hey, they can maybe do something like this and submit it and develop their own programs and their own videos, because kids do that all the time nowadays, and, and then they can teach their friends too. At the end of each um, the thing, I remember this is third through fifth graders, we have a list of books that um, and colorful and, and um, informative that they can go and check out Amazon, their libraries or whatever. So this is one that um, Gary, Gary co wrote about Princess, um, who he talked about in the video. And there's there's different ones that um, we hope are look, look like they're interesting for third through fifth graders. And here's the one that's here's the one from Jack. This is the one that he's written that that you buy this one and it plants a tree in Indonesia. So we have different um, ones in my Third through fifth graders that are serving as our beta group have, have really liked a lot of these books. So I'm excited that they can even get more of them. But one of the things, um, uh, okay, let me, whoops, I lost that thing. Let's go back to there. Okay, then we'll go here. Okay, go back here to the ninth grade. So that was the third through fifth graders. Now I want to see, I wanted to show you the difference because this is the ninth through twelfth graders. And what we want to do with this group is they're older. So remember, these are the ones that are going to be tomorrow's leaders and tomorrow's field researchers. They're going to follow Gary into the field um, and, and do additional research. So we want to approach it a little bit different. And so this is where um, I love Anthony's vi this introductory video. Hey there, fellow adventurers. My name is Anthony Porter. I'm a two-time national finalist on American Ninja Warrior. I'm a professional rock climber, and I just genuinely like to climb and swing from stuff. I'm a member here at the Orangutan Republic Foundation. And today, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a mental exercise for you. So imagine you're sitting on the forest floor, looking up into the vast canopy of leaves that are so dense that they take out most of the sunlight in the rainforest. Now in between the canopy and the forest floor is the understory. And in this understory, you look up into these vast amount of branches and leaves, and you see a big dark figure, and you hear this sound. 
That's right. Today we're talking about our friend, the orangutan, in the Southeast Asian rainforest, one of the oldest rainforests on the planet. So together, we're going to go on an adventure to find out about the orangutan, about its habitat, and about its conservation. Let's do this. Okay, so after that video, there's another teaching slide. So this is going to be a little bit more involved because it's 9th through 12th graders. But anytime that they don't particularly, so there's, there's also, there's going to be a quiz after it. But anytime that they maybe don't remember what the, the, the answers were, were are, they are, that you can just go back to the um, teaching slide and then look up the answers and keep going. But this is something that hopefully it's a little bit more interesting um, for 9th through 12th graders than it is for the, um, for the younger ones at their, at their level. Now this one also, um, so this is, th this one we would, they're always, we're going to have books, but this one we have action, what can I do to help orangutans? Now in this particular section, there's a video, but we're going to skip that for right now because I want to go to this, this last slide. And this is one that, how can you help orangutans? Because remember the ninth through 12th graders, they're, they're getting out there. They're very active on social media. They, they like to volunteers. I mean, look at, in fact, look at Jack. He's, he's not even ninth through 12th grader. And he's, always, he's already doing more than, than most young people his age. But when I, I think of what my, my own children did when I, they were like four, year, four years to, to 11 or 12 when, when I started taking them and they continued to volunteer in their classrooms and I volunteered in their classrooms. And it all started from just learning about orangutans. So if we can do this app, and, and get this on the website and well, we, we can do the app, we're getting this done. Um, hopefully it'll be done before long. Um, and th this, is, this enables them to have a really good foundation and get good information that all the researchers, Leaf, Leaf has, has brought back, Gary has brought back and we get all this information on the app and they can start a fundraiser, they can have their own. Volunteer, post on social media, um, we want them to know that they can make a difference and the impact and their mindset, it matters and they matter. And that's what we want them to know when, you know, as they're growing up and as they're leaving high school, what they can do, it, it matters. And so it's really important. And so we're hoping this makes a big impact um, and, and the kids like it, you know, as, as they uh, grow up in the different age groups. So that's going to be our app. And uh, hopefully we We'll have it up and, and running in just in short order, hopefully. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Becky. And this is, it's been an adventure to get all these videos and curriculum built. And she has been uh, amazing putting it all together. So uh, yeah, she's one of those people that were, that's been humble about it too. She's put a lot of work into that and it shows because it looks amazing. Uh, well, perfect. Next, we're going to hand the reins over to Gary and Liz, and they're going to talk a little bit about their Sumatra trip, and uh, they're going to have some graphics to show as well. So, Gary, are you ready to show that stuff? Actually, this is um, something that Liz has put together. So oh, perfect. So, we're going to just go ahead and roll it. Uh, again, this is our one of our signature programs, the um, Community Education and Conservation Program, or CSEP, and she'll talk about it from her perspective as a volunteer who's gone out into the field, um, enjoying it uh, very, very personally. So, John? Liz's visit to Sumatra to oversee the Orangutan Republic Foundation's CSAP program. Hi, I'm Liz, a member of OURF's Board of Directors and a fan of President Gary Shapiro and of OURF. In my volunteer capacity to review and oversee the Community Education and Conservation Program, or CSAP, Gary encouraged me to travel to Indonesia to meet the people performing the work. So off I went. Meet Ernawati, homestay hostess for Ernest Farm. In her modest village home outside Bukit Lawang, Erna hosted me for two weeks. Here she is with her son, Iqbal. I have made three visits to Sumatra over the past seven years and stayed with Erna when I visited the Pohorok region away from Medan. Erna provided me not only with comfortable family style accommodations, she also showed me around the town of Bukit Lawang, a gateway to Gunung Lusur National Park. 
that's Alia and Iqbal, the boss of the house. I always feel at home with this family. Erna had an education in agriculture and guided OURF's NGO predecessor set to set up a demonstration organic farm. She had me help her plant coconut palm, uh, a coconut palm on their farm in 2015. And it was fun, always good, always with good refreshments. So, Yeshel, YSHL, the Sustainable Green Sumatra Foundation, started in 2019 in Medan, in Sumatra. OURF is their lead supporting organization. They articulate their mission as follows. Our program increase, increases the community understanding and awareness about conservation of natural resources and the environment, and especially conservation of Gunung Lusur National Park. We design programs that respond to biodiversity conservation efforts, which also meet meet the needs of the local community. And here's Gary visiting and providing guidance and goodwill. And this is a map that they that they produced. Um, you can see um, the, the town of Medan on the right. It's not really colored, but it says Kota Medan. And it's about three hours away from Bukit Lawang, which is barely on this map. But the um, the Bohrok region where um, they do their work, their, um, their villages are in the color and the national park itself, Gunung Lusur, is green in this, in this map. And how did we travel? They took us around in this um, large pickup that um, where they um, transport their workers and um, it's suitable for the rough roads of rural Sumatra. When I do my own side visits, though, <laughs> this, there are alternatives. A core program of CSAP is environmental education in rural schools. They have contracts with seven schools at two different grade levels. Michelle staff enter the classroom to educate the students about various conservation topics once a month. So they go and visit all these different uh, villages. Um, they have trained, um, they have trained staff who are knowledgeable instructors who make presentations to students on topics such as orangutan biology, endangered species, food chains, and gardening. And here is a photo of um, some of their field exercises. They also take the kids out to the field. As a foreigner. I was always treated respectfully by the students and teachers alike and when I visited the classrooms. But I wasn't there to really to teach so much as to observe. So when we um, traveled to the different villages, um, most of Sumatra unfortunately looks like this, which is oil palm, <laughs> palm oil plantation, not rainforest anymore. In addition to the formal education program in the schools, CSAP includes education in the more rural um, villages for families that live on palm oil plantations that may not have a means for their child, their children to travel to the public schools. And Yashel travels to and has constructed meeting houses in each of the four villages they visit monthly following a more where they can follow a more general curriculum, which may include lear learning basic reading and writing skills. Part of improving livelihoods is farming organically. Here is a beautiful backdrop that I observed from the demonstration farm at, that Erna and her husband operate. Those mountains in the background are the Gunung Lusur National Park, which is probably, probably a good 20 kilometers um, to the west. Here's another shot of community gardening as it in the, the current programs. Here is a village meeting where Yashel teaches how to make organic fertilizer for use in small scale backyard farming, a core activity to improve village livelihoods. The intent is that 
more secure and fulfilled villagers um, will do more to protect the natural resources in the in their vicinity. Yashel also offers villagers ways in which they may avoid encountering threatening wildlife, wandering out of the nearby park onto their farms and orchards and taking their fruit and vegetables. Another core program of the CSAP is planting trees. Yashel aims to revegetate land that has been deforested adjacent to the park boundary. They replant these areas with predominantly local fruit trees in hopes that the wild animals will help themselves to the fruit here and not in the orchards and cropland on the that the villagers depend on. They also rehabilitate host wildlife habitat in the buffer zones outside the park. Yashelle works with local village volunteers to accomplish these objectives. So that's the Community Education and Conservation Program. And here's the coconut tree that I planted with, with Anna on my first visit after, and this is after three years. I hope to visit it again soon. So this ends my story for now. However, don't miss what's coming next. It's a video presentation that the Yashel team in Indonesia made for this event to provide you with a glimpse of the CSAP activities that your donations to OURF have made possible. Thank you. Oh, Gary, you're on mute. Yeah, you're muted, Gary. Sorry. Oh, I thought I pressed it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to uh, uh, just thank Liz for making that presentation. And as soon as you're ready, John, we can go ahead and shift over to that video.
All right. Awesome. That was yeah. such a great video. It shows the scope of what the effect is by just a few folks, you know, trying to help in the area. It's nice to see you know, on this side of the planet where, you know, we're trying to help and you could see the actual tangible work that's getting done. And just to let you guys know, when they were putting that barbed wire out, this is what they call tiger proof enclosures because they have tigers in that area affecting the villagers and livestock. So this is one way we're helping them out to make sure that their cattle are not going to be killed by the, the tigers again. It's much bigger than just orangutans. It's really a holistic approach to improving the livelihood of people. That's how you get them on your side is that you work with them to help them out, not just vilify them for breaking the law, but show them better ways to uh, live a life that's uh, without poisons and pesticides or organic farming and improving. Notice what they did with the, uh, the yards, having them actually plant around their houses so they don't have to go out and open up new areas. And, and actually increase their livelihood that way. We're trying to figure out how much that's actually working because it's really um, a long-term kind of an experiment to see what's effective. But you know, it's, it's work in progress in the field and it's really important. Awesome. Right. So, Thank you so much, Gary. Okay. Uh, yeah. Next on our agenda, uh, we're gonna bring Jack on and we're gonna talk about some of the VIP uh, donors, ticket holders, and some of the folks that have been donating uh, that are the, some of the very important folks uh, in, in the Rain Tank Republic Foundation. So Jack, are you hopping on? We can go through this list real quick. Uh, yes. We've got amazing people. These folks are, are going above and beyond and, and we're very grateful. So we wanna make sure that their names are being heard. Uh, first off, we have Sandra Blake and we have Ruthie and Jim Garaventa and Becky Keller, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> and then we have Jeffrey Crisman, Harvey Jordan, and Dave Rasmussen. Am I saying that right? I feel like Rasmussen, yeah. You wanna get the rest of them there, Jack? Yes, so the rest of these are Topher White. I know Topher. <laughs> Timothy Pratt, Jillian Kellis, who is actually my aunt. And so big shout out to her and a big shout out to the rest of her family. Thank you for being here tonight and for supporting OURF. Really appreciate it. Uh, and then the rest of them are Sylvia Medina and then Joe and Michael Witt. So thank you so much, everybody who has helped to support OURF via these VIP tickets. Thank you so much. And your support is so greatly appreciated and needed in orangutan conservation. So thank you all so Absolutely. much. And I encourage you to uh, everyone else to continue to bid on those auction items and continue to uh, help support the event tonight like these well, definitely we're in the final stretch now we're in the second half of our program so feel free to check out that website that we have in the link uh i just got a text update we have uh two more names to add to the list on top of uh becky keller again we have ellen lambert and colleen stamper thank you so much for making a, a great difference and we very much appreciate it Wonderful. All right. And next on our list, we're going to have uh, a sonic butterfly uh, presentation. And Gary, I know that you want to talk a little bit on this uh, meeting you had with this wonderful person that uh, ended up becoming a musical guest and, and someone that's passionate that uh, their goals align well with our program. You're muted, Gary. Oh, Gary's muted. <laughs> Not again. Oh, please. Everybody tries yeah. to get me to close my mouth, but <laughs> uh, I don't try to do it myself typically. Um, anyway, just to let you know, I, I'll do a brief setup. It's um, it was really amazing. Uh, one of our longtime uh, volunteers, Harvey Jordan, told me about Andrea Rook, who does this amazing instrument called the Sonic Butterfly. So we went out to visit her at her studio in Ojai and spent a great, wonderful afternoon listening to her perform. And so We'd like to, she, she offered to perform for us here uh, with one of her video clips. So we're gonna play that for you right now so you could see Sonic Butterfly. So John. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Ojai Cocoon. My name is Andrea Brook and this is Sonic Butterfly. Sonic Butterfly is my design of acoustic chromatic two octave long string harp. Sonic Butterfly is an instrument of transformation. I travel all over the world and transform theaters, architecture, 
and natural environments into giant musical instruments. And I'm thrilled to be here today at the No Fuss fundraiser for the Orangutan Republic Foundation. Thank you for having me. I hope I see you again soon. Wow. What do you think of that, Anthony? I think I want to hire her to just like go put me to bed every night. <laughs> <laughs> that is so nice. Oh my gosh. So how did you end up meeting her? How did that start? Oh, through Harvey, Harvey Jordan. Yeah. One of our, who, he's been a great guy. He's uh, hosted fundraisers at his house um, previous years and he's been to Borneo with me. He's coming on our tour to Borneo with his son, uh, River. Awesome. And uh, yeah, he's he he was the one who connected uh, us together. And so, I think it's that's a true testament to like this kind of industry and this work is you're, you're going to meet people that are more on the outside of the the local norms, and you find these amazing, unique people. And that's a true testament to it, right there. Right. Well, let's let's move on because we got another session here. We got to go over, and we're running a bit late. So we'd like to. Um, what I'd like to do now is uh, share my screen and uh first of all as everybody knows this is uh this is orangutan caring week and our theme this year is orangutan superheroes don't wear capes um what we decided to do like back in september is to create an art contest an art and video contest so we did that 
and we wanted people around the world to participate. And so we, we, we put it out there from uh, the 1st of October to the 1st of November, send us submissions. And we got a, a lot of submissions. Uh, we also were able to get three wonderful judges, everybody in the art area, including Alexandra Saunders. And I mentioned Harvey Jordan earlier and Mar Mary Lou Nikolai, but we were, have a pleasure of having Alexandra Saunders, former Pongo Award winner, <laughs> joining us. Hi, Alexandra. Good to see you. Hi, Gary. Hi, everyone. So we're going to go through this quickly because, you know, originally we had set it up to make a kind of a lengthy thing, but I think what we can do is honor the uh, participants. So, you know, like I said, we had 18 entries from four countries, most of them from Indonesia. Maybe um, I'd like you, Alexandra, to kind of talk about some of these winning submissions. Well, I want to thank everyone for your submissions and your creations. Art can be powerful and it gives us a vehicle to give a voice to the voiceless. The creation of art is a very intimate, very private affair. And yet it's when we share this with others, when we were brave enough to share it with others, that it takes on a power that can move people to take action. So by investing your time, your heart and soul in your creations, you are also orangutan superheroes without capes. And with that, I wanted to announce the first, second, and third place graphic artists. It's the first place, it goes to Tanoj Smadar. The second place goes to Patricia Gabe Rahu. And the third place goes to um, Maria Ardina. And I apologize if I haven't pronounced your names right. For the video clips, the first place goes to Dita Shofatul Habiba. The second place goes to Patricia Gabe Ratu. And the third place goes to Ahmad Fazi Delard. And um, you can go on to the website and look at these. We don't have time to share them tonight, but please do go on to um, OURF website and you will be able to take a look at these um, these wonderful art pieces. Right, right. Actually go to the news section on our website. It has links to the YouTube channel where the videos are. And you'll oh, be able that's to great. Them. Yeah, so we have it available for people through our website. So visit orangutanrepublic.org. So what we'd like to do, I think now, is let John play the, the videos real quick. I think, uh, or do you think we ought to maybe move forward because we're a little bit uh, behind time? What do you think? Oh, I, I think uh, we should move forward. People can go to the website and they can look at the, um, them, uh, the winner's uh, contributions on their own. And I think they can look at them several times, which uh, they certainly warrant that. So, Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Gary. And thank you, Alexandra. And I'm going to have to do a little quick uh, changeover real quick to um, my screen to the next uh just hold hold with me for a second here and uh thank you so much for um being part of this particular presentation so of course of course okay. anything for raising funds for OURF it's remarkable the work that you're doing and I it gives me great pleasure to be part of it thank you so very much all right so what we're going to do is do a little bit on palm oil and the RSPO. So I think, you know, what do all these products that you see have in common? Well, they all contain palm oil as an ingredient. Palm oil is a versatile vegetable oil that's pressed from the fresh fruit bunches of the oil palm tree. Now it grows best in the tropics and in the same place where orangutans and other biodiversity is found. Unfortunately, the orangutans forest habitat and orangutans themselves have suffered as millions of hectares of forest have been converted to large estate plantations over the decades, 
Jack talked about driving through it. He saw it with his own eyes. And anybody who goes out now to Borneo and Sumatra cannot help but to see that. But I will say that in response to the destructive practice of converting biodiverse and carbon-rich forests to plantations, NGOs such as WWF and progressive palm oil companies came together in 2004 to start the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil with the objectives of promoting the growth and use of sustainable palm oil products through global standards and multi-stakeholder governance. Now keep in mind, palm oil provides the yard largest yield of any vegetable oil crop. So changing it to a different oil, say to soy or you know, some other form, would require cultivating a larger area of land to produce the same amount of oil. Thus boycotting palm oil is not the answer. Taming the industry is the best approach. So in 2011, at the request of another organization, orangutan organization, OURF joined the RSPO as a voting member. Rather than to criticize the industry from on the outside, OURF works with other NGOs within the RSPO to strategize and vote for resolutions that strengthen the principles and criteria defining certified palm oil. Now, palm oil expansion actually has slowed down and dramatically in recent years because of Indonesian policy not to issue new palm oil permits. But orangutans are still considered pests by palm oil managers and are still at risk. So work still has to be done. Now, the other thing I wanna mention, this is very important, is that millions of people, we call them smallholders because they don't have giant plantations. They have maybe 20 or 25 hectares of land. They depend on palm oil as a means of income. They're now being educated by the RSPO trainers and providing, providing them a way to sell their palm oil as certified, certified sustainably. Now, finally, only 21% of all palm oil is currently RSPO certified. So there's a lot of room to improve. We want to encourage companies, if they're going to use palm oil, to choose certified um, sustainable palm oil. Now, the next palm oil uh, roundtable will be held later this month, and the Orangutan Republic Foundation will be attending both in person and virtually. So we're hoping to be at the table representing orangutans so that we can improve this industry. So that's my presentation on the RSPO. And what I'd like to do, this kind of is a segue because uh, palm oil is one of the things that brought um, Hardy Bakhtina Toro um, to our, our uh, attention because of his, he saw it with his own eyes what was going on. And he took it upon himself to create an organization called the Center for Orangutan Protection. And um, right now, what I'd like to do first is play a video that came to us from COP about the new BORA, the Borneo Orangutan Rescue Alliance. So John, if you could play it, and then we'll talk with Hardy in a few minutes.
All right. Well, joining me, well, here's Anthony, but uh, Hardy Bakniatoro, who is the founder of uh, COP and what you saw right here producing it. Maybe you can um, join me right now on the conversation. Unmute your microphone and your video, Hardy. I mean, it's coming uh... to us from Jakarta. Yeah. There we go. Uh... You are with us. Uh, while he's trying to get back on, uh, I know he's he's right there. Um, he has been working tirelessly for for many many years, and uh, we are very appreciative of Bahardi for all that you have done. Yes. Okay, you've got your audio okay. now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, coming mm -hmm. in, coming to us from Jakarta. You just uh, you're on your way to Maidan tomorrow. I yeah. Know. So you're doing, you know, you're working now with TOP. So it's great that you're, uh, we're doing a bunch of different things, you know, the Bora project mm -hmm. that we just saw. Maybe you can tell us why, why we need Bora right now. Uh, in East Borneo, uh, there are several uh, subspecies of orangutan in, uh, in Borneo. There are three subspecies. One of them is uh, Pongo Pygmaeus morio. Uh, it is located in uh, East Borneo. Currently, a uh, uh, couple years ago, there, is, there was only one center there run by Borneo Orangutan Survival Foundation in the south of the East Borneo. East Borneo itself is a very big uh, province, actually very big, uh, bigger than Java Island, actually. So uh, there is a need to develop uh, the other one uh, in the north. So that's why uh, then the government asked me to to develop new one, and then we, 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 we make it. So uh, currently, there are more than uh, 25 orangutan uh, uh, being cared there in the rescue center. And then, yeah, I think more than 10 uh, orangutan already being uh, released back to the wild. So it's actually it is a very effective and run well uh, center in the East Borneo, uh, East, Northern East Borneo. Great, great. Now, I know that it's always been difficult finding areas to release orangutans into because, mm -hmm. you know, palm oil has taken over quite a number of areas. And in East Borneo, we have a lot of coal mining concessions as well. So maybe mm -hmm. you can tell us what uh, TOP uh, we're all doing together to look for new places for orangutans. Do you have any anything you could share? Yeah. Uh... Thanks to the government of Indonesia who allow us to uh, to acquire forest as a really site, and it is being will be being managed uh, privately as a yeah as part of our organization. Then it is for next uh, 60 years actually. Currently, we already uh, acquire about uh, 50,000 hectares. We already get a permit from principal permit from the minister. And then we still need uh, another 12 months uh, preparation for any any other permits. And then, yeah, hopefully next year we will legally have uh, 50 years, uh, 50,000 hectares of the forest as a sanctuary uh, for, for the release site for the orangutans. And the other good news is also the government also approved, our local government approved another 50,000 hectares also. For the release site, so it is uh, like uh, it will be very big landscape for orangutan so protection area in the yeah in East Borneo. That's that's great news. So, I mean, this is the kind of news people dream about. You know, it's really yeah. almost like um, visualizing and manifesting the orangutan republic, because yeah. you know we're going to make sure that those orangutans are going to be protected at least yeah. for sixty years and hopefully with an extension. So that's yeah. great great news. Yeah. yeah, thank you for, for Orangutan Ore uh, that's promoting our job also, our work also, yeah. And then, yeah, it's very big support for us. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us tonight, Hardy. And uh, yeah. we'll, be, we'll be talking soon. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you for... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hardy. Thank you so much, Hardy. That was an amazing... Uh... Amazing piece of news. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Jack, would you like to uh, bring on Nikki next? 
uh, yeah, go right ahead. Awesome. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're having a great time tonight, learning lots of um, wonderful, valuable information. Um, and that was um, great to hear all that positive news from Hardy and what they're doing now um, in Indonesia. And that video, I mean, you know, orangutans are so cute. So it's always good to see them being released and um, just seeing positive news. So really wonderful. Um, next, I wanna to talk to you about our monthly membership program. This um, is how you can help ensure the long-term long survival of critically endangered orangutans in, in their habit, um, habitat. Excuse me. So we truly um, appreciate you being here with us tonight. Um, and um, as you've been learning about all the programs that we worked on, that we're working on, um, like the CSEP program, the community education and conservation program that um, Liz went over earlier, and then also our scholarship program that Gary's going to talk about um, a little bit later. Um, we have a lot of great volunteers and ideas, um, but we can't keep these programs running um, and operating without the support of our monthly members. It's that important. Important. So your membership allows us to plan and organize our budget and priorities for the upcoming year. Um, so for just $9 a month, um, that's the price of a double pumpkin latte these days and almost a gallon of gas here in California. But anyways, um, you can make a significant difference in what the OURF can accomplish. Um, your donation helps us provide scholarships to deserving Indonesian youth um, who are ready to study biology, agriculture, vet sciences, and then also become stewards of their land. Um, your membership also lends financial support to our team of conservation educators in the remote villages of Indonesia. These teams work diligently to deliver curriculum um, to local villages and teach sustainable farming practices. They also monitor orangutans in their habitats and plant trees in order to restore these valuable forests. So again, for just $9 a month or $100 for the year, you can make a difference. Um, and then if you do sign up for membership, these are a few things that you get. Um, you get a free uh, OURF desk desktop Zoom background, and we are in a lot of Zoom meetings these days, so that would be a great way to show your support. Um, they're usually designed by one of Indonesian youth. We might take one from our art contest this year, and that's a great uh, talking piece to have as your background. Um, and then a free OURF badge. That's a um, physical piece of uh, memorabilia that you can have to remind you um, what, what your membership goes towards and um, also, we, all, we have our special membership quarterly e newsletters that talk about all the updates um, that are going on in the field um, and have great links to interesting articles from Manga Bay um, and then press releases, um, things that we think that you would like to know. Um, you also get invitations to exclusive events like our upcoming Pongo Awards um, scheduled for April 14th of next year. Um, that's going to be a great event, um, and then also like fundraisers for tonight. And then most importantly, you get that warm feeling. So you know your $9 a month goes to um, such a great cause and is actually making a difference. So you can sign up for membership by um, clicking in the uh, chat link below. Um, we'll put that website in there for you. Um, it's also listed here at the bottom of the screen. Um, and uh, all means, just let us know if you have any questions. You could cancel at any time, but your $9 a month does mean a lot. Uh, so at this point, we're going to open it up for a Q&A um, session. We have a couple questions down in our hopper. Um, so I'll open those and um, we'll see what we've got. Um, this first question is um, from Douglas, and he wants to know, um, well, he said, it's great to see the Council General on tonight. With that said, is the current governor, government of Indonesia on board with the OURF and other NGOs in um, their quest to preserve these light, vital links to our earth? So Gary, that might be a good question for you. Do you wanna take that? Oh, sure. And if you wanna end your screen sharing, we can sure. um, pop up uh, maybe Anthony as well and, and Jack to kind of join me here. Um, I think you heard Hardy talking about the government asking us to build these things, right? And so the government is very supportive actually 
And it's, I think it's something people should recognize. You know, our council general is very supportive. If you go into the consulate now, they have re, he has actually spent a lot of money renovating the consulate building, which has stood there for many, many years. It's owned by the government of Indonesia. But if you look at the second floor, he's got all types of signage and um, uh, all types of messages on the on the walls about the biodiversity, about um, uh, the history of of the natural world of of Indonesia, and it's it's really something I had never seen before until Pak Krisnawan, uh, Pak Wawan, actually became the Council General. So yes, the Council General is on board. He is he helps us in terms of um, uh, being able to do. Uh, the kind of connections we need to do back to Jakarta. If we need to say contact some offices there, they help with that. But definitely in the in the uh, in Indonesia itself, the government has been very supportive and encouraging us to actually take take the steps. And of course, when we work up in Sumatra, we're working cooperatively with the government, uh, with the national park folks, as well as the um, natural resource division of the forestry department. So. Yeah, uh, they're on board. Uh, we also have to be respectful and realize that we shouldn't be insulting because it's very easy to kind of look down our noses and tell them that they're maybe not moving fast enough in this one area or whatever. But those of us who live there and work there for many, many years understand that we are guests in their country and we have to treat them respectfully. So while we might not agree with a lot of things they do or some of the things they do, we wanna be respectful in how we approach them and understand the cultural ways we can get our, our message across without um, making, making them upset. So again, you know, it's, it's about understanding where you are and the nuances. And like I said, it's, uh, it's very complex, like Jack found out when he went out there. You know, it's not easy. Um, even talking about palm oil. You know, I was once on a TV show in Jakarta having to walk that fine line about speaking about palm oil in a way that's not going to be insulting. And, you know, it's understanding the situation from their perspective as well. So, yeah, they, we, don't, we don't criticize governments. That's one of our mottos is that we are here to uh, work together and collaboratively. I hope that answers the question. I think that was well put, absolutely. And I, I, mean, I could add to that too, just, uh, I mean, it's become such a big culture of pledges nowadays, especially in the Western culture, if we pledge this much by this much um, at this time in the arbitrary future uh, at some points. But uh, I've seen a few policies coming out of Indonesia that's been pretty cool, and, and they've laid lines down that are pretty clear, which is great. Um, so yeah, in, in some ways, it's kind of refreshing to see some of the policies that they've created so far. Right. Yeah. Actually, they created a brand new one with... Uh... I think the Congo uh, with the uh, DRC and Brazil, this new kind of three country uh, initiative that was announced, I think both at the G20 or the, uh, G, uh, the G20 and at uh, COP27, just uh, which is wrapping up. So, you know, they have a block of countries that are really, that have most of the rainforest of the world, if you think about it. Uh, and so they're, they're, they're actually uh, moving forward into promoting this. Now that Brazil has a, uh, I think a more liberal president who cares about rainforest, it's, you know, the Amazon is a big, big part of the tropical world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you want to add something, Jack? Uh, I was just going to say, make sure to send any uh, questions down below. We'd love to have some more. Um, I was going to say, yeah, definitely working with other countries. You know, Indonesia is definitely taking some steps in the right direction. So as much as we can to help them and help support their country is definitely, you know, working with them, not against them. We aren't battling people. We're working to, you know, connect with them and work with them and to help them understand. And, you know, just in general, working with the government, not against it, because there are partners in this fight to help with biodiversity and with orangutans uh, just as much as anyone is. So well said. Well said. You, you've and got you're to... how old? You should. If I was that well, wise when I was your age, I, I want you running for president someday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, maybe we uh, could move on to the next section. 
Yeah, absolutely. We've got a, a great next uh, musical guest and a bit of a, a dancing uh, feature by uh, Priscilla. And she's coming from Borneo, is that correct? That's correct. Well, actually, there's no dancing. It's actually singing. Perfect. But it's beautifully okay. done. And uh, all I can say is she's wonderful. She is one of the recipients of the Orangutan Caring Scholarship, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And she and some of the other recipients and others in central Borneo put this together. So let's have a listen. Awesome. All right. Did we get it? Oh, nice. There we go. That was Abrupt great. Ending, uh, but that was beautiful. Yeah, that was awesome. Always, uh, always a pleasure to listen to anyone sing, and uh, definitely wonderful, wonderful job. That was. Did you see the message, the the uh, actual translation of what they were saying? Yeah, yeah. I I thought that was actually yeah really good message that was getting across about you know protecting the village and. Helping the yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember we talked about the uh, superheroes that don't wear capes, right? These are the indigenous people of, of Borneo. They and, are those superheroes. Uh, well, they really are, really are. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, let's let's carry on, folks. Okay. All, All right. right. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about the auction because it looks like we have. Uh, Less than 20 minutes before the auction closes, folks. So if you are looking to get any of these items, if you were like, oh, you know what? That might be a good item. Now is the time. Now is the time to try to snag any of those items. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, a list of what is uh, currently, I guess, do we want to go over the donor list really fast? I was going to say, yeah, let's, uh, we've gotten some big, big, big sponsorships. 
in the past couple of hours here. So let's uh, let's pull that up now. We got some really big ones. So yeah, it's been incredible. Let me see if I can get the names really fast. Uh, live updates this one is uh, John Witty, who donated one thousand two hundred dollars to support OURF tonight. Thank you so John, much. Thank you so much. That it's an amazing surprise and and very fun to. Uh, be a part of this organization where people are inspired to give that much. So thank you so much. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And yeah, thank you for everything. And uh, next up, we have uh, Ellen Lambert, who donated $1,000, one of the biggest donations of tonight. Thank you so much, Ellen. And the final one is Colleen Stamper with another $1,000 donation. Wow. Absolutely I wonderful. We have completely smashed like what I was expecting in these first couple of hours here. So actually, I believe we can pull up our durian, our durian um, meter here and oh boy. Care about where we are at right now. Let's see. Wow. Look at that. Oh, $7,560. Yeah? I believe we started the night with not too much more than 3,000, if not less. So that's we incredible. have, uh, Siswi is happy with her durians, that's for Siswi's sure. Siswi is happy. And it's just, yeah, it just means so much. I mean, it, you 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 folks truly are making a huge difference by donating this money. I mean, this is going to people that that are, are getting educated and inspired to be the next generation of stewards for not only the rainforest, but the planet. Just, just know that your money is going to something incredibly important. So thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who has donated. And remember, the auction is still open. It'll be open until 7.30 tonight, Pacific time for my time here in New Hampshire in the Northeast, in the Eastern time zone here. It is, it closes at 10.30. So let's get the final bids in before the auction closes. And how long do we have left? Wait, is that 15? My camera's backwards. Is this 51 or 15? Is this 15? We have yeah, 15, 15 minutes left. There you go, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 15 minutes until the auction closes. So let's get those final bids in and let's see if we can hit that goal of $10,000. I think we can do it. What do you think, Anthony? I'm inspired by the numbers I've seen so far. And I think in the next few minutes, if we get that up there, it'll mean a, a world of a difference. So thank you folks so much. I believe we can do it. Uh, I with believe your we help. can do it too. Let's so, uh, uh, go ahead. I was yeah. going to say next on our list, if we want to... Uh, see those numbers rise in the next few minutes. We have an amazing person, Topher White, who is uh, a founder of the Rainforest Connection that is gonna come on the screen in a little bit here uh, with Gary and talk a little bit about the, the operations that he does uh, across the planet. And, and it's an amazing, amazing operation. So Topher, feel free to uh, take it away. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? I'm not sure we see Topher here um, at this moment. Oh, uh, something may have happened. So yeah. uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of a maybe delay uh, and move on to the next block uh, just so we can keep everything moving along. But um, uh, hopefully Topher will appear. And if he does, we'll slip him in. And uh, if not, well, hopefully we'll see him in another time. But, uh, you know, I know that. Uh, Nikki, you're going to be doing the next block. So thanks Great. for jumping in. Perfect. And, uh, we'll let you kind of do the, the section on outreach. Outreach, yep. Thank you, Sounds Nikki. Sounds good, yeah. Thank you. One moment, please. OK. Well, yep, next I want to talk about outreach. Um, so what outreach does, it raises awareness and funds to support orangutan and forest conservation activities. And so I want to give you an update on um, things that we're currently working on our project. Uh, first of all, we have a direct mailer um, that was sent out to a thousand California addresses. It's due to land in um, people's mailboxes this week. We worked with a direct mail company. Um, it chose a thousand um, people that already donate to animal causes. Um, so we're hoping that this will um, teach them about what we're doing. Um, it gives them kind of insight what the issues are today, what's being worked on to resolve. There's a great message from Gary in there. So hopefully um, these people will really 
um, get in tune with that. They'll see some pictures. It's a you know double-sided newsletter. And then hopefully they'll sign up for our uh, membership that way, get involved. Um, next, as Becky went over earlier, is the education app. This is gonna be fun for all ages. Um, great information for kindergartners through 12th. And um, I think even adults, there's so many great orangutan facts in there. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and then our e-newsletters, um, these have relevant articles, um, OURF updates and news from the field. Um, so that's a great way to get in touch with people and let them know what we're working on or any kind of upcoming events. And then we also have in-person events like Earth Day. Um, this one was the first one uh, last April that we had done over the last few years because of COVID. Um, so that's a great way to get out into the community, meet people, um, teach them about what we're doing and get them excited. So we are able to sign up a lot of people at that Earth Day event for our um, newsletter. Perfect. Um, and so, of course, fundraisers like this and the upcoming Spring Pongo Awards, um, those are great ways to get out into the community, um, meet people, give them updates. Um, and of course, social media, we all know how important that is these days. It's a great way to share projects, campaigns, and then um, celebrate social holidays. And just we're trying to really grow our reach right now. Um, there's so much out there. We um, they're just trying to be relevant and give people good content that they like, cute stuff, but also important um, important posts as well. And then uh, last Mother's Day, we launched our new program. It's Don't Send Me a Card. Um, these are e-cards that you can send to your loved ones. So I'll show you some examples of these. Um, so these are the Don't Send Me a Card, the customizable e-cards. Um, this is the website that you go to to purchase your e-card and you can get these for as little as a dollar mm -hmm. donation to OURF. What's that, Gary? You'll need to share your screen. Oh, okay. I thought I was. This thick. Okay, here we go. I'll make it full size. Okay. So here are the cards here. Um, don't send me a card, Custom customizable e-cards um, with the link. Uh, these are some cards that we have posted up there right now. Um, and there's several others for all the holidays. And then thank you. Thank you cards, happy birthday. Um, so you can send these for as little as a dollar donation um, and they go straight to your loved one or friend's inbox. Um, so this is really cute. Um, good way, especially if you forgot to get something in the mail and you need to do something quick. So I've had to do that and these are great. Um, this next slide just shows some of our social media posts um, that we've worked on these this last year. So we have the National Redhead Day, just trying to um, play along with some of those national holidays that we all hear so much about. Um, I think like every day has a national holiday. Um, but then also touch on some more of the uh, more serious matters, like our scholarship program, try to show people out in the field. Um, here's that Bruno print um, that Alexandra did. We were able to do a contest for that. Um, so the lucky winner won a print. Um, so social media is a great way to um, tout our contest and get people involved. Um, down here is, um, I think, World Animal Day. Um, and then we ran a nice volunteer post. So it shows uh, Gary and people out in the field and gives some background of what people could work on to um, help out the organization. And then um, more shots from the field. This was um, for uh, National STEM Day. That was just, I think, a few weeks ago. So important too, to show that um, we have women in our scholarship programs. I think almost half of the graduates are women or, um, half of the students. So that's really important to us. Okay, so those are all the things that OURF has been working on, but here are some ways that you can get involved and do your own kind of outreach. And so Becky talked about um, some of these earlier, but they're just kind of good um, reminders and easy things to do, such as um, sharing our social media posts onto your page. Um, that's a great way to, way to bring awareness. Then also be sure to like our webpage as 
well as the World Orangutan Events Facebook and Instagram pages as well. That way you keep up to date on everything that's going on and there's a lot of great content on there. Um, another way is to initiate an information booth or table at um, a local event like Earth Day in your city. I think most cities have these now. Um, so it's great to be out. It's a nice day, get to meet a lot of people. You can also do a booth or table at um, your local church, library, and um, even school. It could be grade school, um, it can be college, um, anything. I think as long as you have um, the right information and um, a good crowd, then you know you can open a lot of people up to what we're doing. And so then also hosting fundraising events. Um, this could be just something really small, like a bake, bake sale at your school. Um, you can host a movie night at your house. I know a lot of people are doing like backyard movie nights. Um, that can be a lot of fun. Then you can have snacks there to um, sell and that's how you would raise the money. It's also important. Um, way to reach out is to um, find a petition that you like and collect signatures for that. Um, and of course, using social media to promote that petition. Um, you can check out our website. We offer um, certain petitions that we are um, interested in or that we think are valid and, um, and worthy. Um, so yeah, be sure to check out our website for more details and um, the links here at the bottom. Of the page. Okay. Um, that's all I had for community outreach. Next, I think Gary's going to talk to you about um, the Orangutan Caring Scholarship. Right, right. Well, that was a great segue. You mentioned it in one of the social media posts. So, um, yeah, I, I just want to share a quick story here. Um, this young lady that's popping up on the screen, uh, Sharif, Sharifa Leah Andriati, uh, was the first recipient of an orangutan caring scholarship back in 2006. And when we started the program, we only gave out one. But we've been doing this now. This is our 17th year with this program. This is something that uh, has been growing. And I'm really, really proud of it. It's something, it's one of our signature programs. Now, we do it with implementing organizations in the field because we obviously uh, are here in the United States, but we work with Indonesian partners. Uh, first, we started with uh, OIC. As you remember, Jack mentioned meeting Panut Harisuswoyo, who is uh, the founder of OIC. And so he and I and my wife, we, we met back in 05 to talk about starting this program. So by 2006, we did our first one. And then we moved from North Sumatra to Aceh. And then later we moved to West Kalimantan, West Borneo in 2012 and started working with the local group Yesan Palung, which is actually under the Gunung Palung Orangutan Conservation Program. And in 2018, we moved to central Kalimantan and worked with the Borneo Nature Foundation. Those, those singers you just heard, that's who they're working with. Uh, that's their partners. And they help administer the scholarship there. Now, just two years, well, last year, we actually, we started working with CLP in East Kalimantan and what this does is it completes the, the entire constellation of orangutan range provinces in Indonesia. So now we're able to offer scholarships in all the provinces where orangutans are found. And of course, we work with the partnering universities in each one of those provinces. So, you know, up in Aceh, we're really lucky. We're working with the vet school at uh, Shia Kuala University. Um, we also have funding partners. The major one is the orangutan project. So again, we are their fiscal sponsor in the United States, but they're one of our major funders out of Australia. And of course, we work with other organizations. We're working uh, for a long time with the Andrew Sabin Family Foundation. And of course, we invite other organizations to want to partner with us, because one of the things we'd like to do is ensure the longevity of this particular program. Now, in 17 years, we've given out 244 multi-year scholarships. They can go as long as four years or they can be as short as two or three years, depending upon uh, the students who get them. And we give a little bit of authority to the implementing organizations. But the major fields that we really emphasize are biology, forestry, and veterinary science. And with the vet science ones, we give them an extra year so they can actually graduate as practicing vets and not have to do another year. So here's the graphics I want you all to look at. 
This is how the program has grown from that single one in 2006 to the uh, about 28 or 26 that we gave out last year. Now, what we're going to do is probably give out 30 next year, and that will complement. Every province will get six scholarships. So we're going to continue to promote this. Here is the, the breakdown in the fields of study, mostly in the fields of forestry and biology. And of course, we also have veterinary science. But there are some other, other fields that we sometimes look at or we agree to, like geography or law, especially if it has to do with the natural sciences too. Now, two years ago, we oh, were- Doctor, COVID. sorry, really fast, just to interrupt you. We have two minutes left on the auction. So if you have oh. anything left in your cart, if you have anything that you're about to purchase, make sure this is the time. This is the time of the night to make sure you finish anything else that you're checking out. Thanks, right. Anthony. Thanks sorry for bringing Appreciate it. Yeah, get those last bids in. I'm, all, I'm gonna be wrapping up real soon here. I just wanted to mention that we could not go out. I couldn't go out to the field and many of the students couldn't actually meet because of COVID in 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. But I'm happy to say in 2022, we had our awards ceremonies. I was able to visit every site that we, uh, we helped. And uh, I'm so proud of these students who are, who are now graduating and going into positions of, of influence in uh, with the NGO world or in government or even in, in the uh, business world. They are becoming advocates for orangutans. So that's what we like to say. Graduates become advocates. And so we've got 149 who have graduated so far and many of them also continue to uh, carry on with their postgraduate education. Uh, so I'm really, really happy to tell you that, that uh, Perlicia, who was the lead singer in the, the video you saw a few minutes ago, she'll be graduating at the end of this year. So we're really happy about that. And uh, she's already got a job working for another orangutan organization. So congratulations to her. Now, one thing you can do is help support the program through the Sponsor Student Scholarship. And we have that on our website. Uh, I'm really happy to say we've got a number of people who are or do donating to this program. This helps the cause and we really, really appreciate everyone's support. So that is that presentation. And maybe we can uh, go to, I don't know, do we have uh, time for any questions? We think we've answered the question that we had. We did have one fan of Jack's uh, saying that they would vote for president uh, of Jack, which I, I agree with. Right. But I Thank think that you, was suspiciously the same last name as you, Jack. So I don't think that might have been your pop. Your pop. I don't think they're related. No, definitely not my grandfather. I promise. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lovely. Right. If you folks want to put anything in the chat now, uh, the silent auction is now, it's over. And I have to say, uh, I'm very impressed with the number that we've gotten so far from the beginning of this to the end. Uh, donations have quadrupled, uh, which is an amazing thing. What do you think, Jack? Yeah, really impressive what we've been able to do tonight. Thank you so much for your support, everyone. Absolutely. Uh, well, perfect. Uh, if we do have some time, uh, what do you think, Gary? We can uh, uh, grab David for some music if, yeah. if you've got some time for that. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah, let's do perfect. it. Woo! I love it. David, are you ready to play us some wait. jams? Uh, oh, he's ready. Look at him. So ready. Okay. He's prepared. Yep. Let's hear it, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Like it's yours, David. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's amazing that we've raised so much money tonight. Um, really great that we got so much support. And uh, thank you, Dr. Shapiro, for all of your um, support tonight for your volunteers. I think uh, we all really appreciate it and are just happy to be a part of this. Um, so this song I want to do is an original song. Um, thanks again for having me here tonight. Um, and it's called Ordinary People. It's just about how no matter where you are, you know, you're, you are impacting the world and there is really no ordinary people.
only this one feels the weight of the sun and they open up to none it makes it easier to run and they wait till it's done till every spiral's been spun and then they're thrown into the deep unknown and think who's gonna step in my shoes next who's gonna pick up where my bruises left me Replaceable Do ordinary people belong in a world the extraordinary only? Do ordinary people belong? Dream for what other people want And they'll be aching for months But now the pain's a part of home Yeah, to take it all When his feet turn cold And think, who's gonna do what I've done? Yeah, who's got the willingness to give it up for none? Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, David. Wow. I mean, you said that was an original? Yeah, it was. Thanks. How neat. I mean, wow. yeah. The That's a song if I'm like album. debating my destiny in a car on a rainy day. And that's <laughs> that's exactly what I need to be listening to. Looking out the window like you're in a music video. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully the front window, because I would be driving. But I guess, Jack, you're right. The backseat for sure. Yeah, backseat. Uh, well, perfect. Uh, if we can just kind of go over the folks that uh, won some awesome prizes really fast uh, yeah. in our uh, silent auction. So our auction has now finished, but that doesn't mean that our fun has finished because that means everybody who has bid on an item has hopefully won something. I don't know, maybe you got outbid it, but um, let's see, top items. So Oh, yeah, ahead. the first one was uh, Starry-Eyed Princess. Gosh, that is such a beautiful painting. It's like, yeah, it's like the starry night, starry-eyed princess. I like that. Is that a play on words on purpose, Gary? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Yeah, that, right. that particular that particular filter did the original Polaroid. It really pops out. I really like that uh, the play with the color. Yeah, absolutely. And that that was bid. Um, that went for 110. Pretty good. Um, we did get a bidding war, which is great. 
Okay, yeah. well, I can't wait to ship it out to whoever got it. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I don't think it says on the site. It just has some uh, serial number. So uh, everybody is just a serial number right now. And then the awesome fridge magnet. I'm glad I talked that up. Woo! Yeah, eight bucks for uh, the highest bid. My mom actually bid on that one, but she got outbidded, so. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> it's a desirable for sure. And then yeah. we've got the book and plush toy combo. Uh, is this just a picture of the plush toy? There we go. And the book. There we go. Love the orangutan. Uh, perfect. And yep, this had two bids as well. Beautiful. And these were just the top items. So we had other things that were uh, voted for as well. And we got the awesome tote bag, vegan leather, premium cotton blend, environmentally friendly, sustainably uh, sourced. Use it at the grocery store, yoga class, or organization. I need to do that because I need to organize my home. So I'm jealous of whoever bought that one. <laughs> hey, Zach, where's Serena? Who's that guy? Hey, I, I have no idea. He, he looks quite different today, doesn't he? <laughs> Stellar. Same well, jawline. She, she was the one who got me started with orangutans 49 years ago. Oh. Awesome. On, on June 22nd, 1970. Three? Yeah. I, I remember so. it like it was yesterday. Hey, Anthony, wow. you're, uh, I was just looking at your item. It went for a hundred bucks. Congrats. What? It did? Yeah, it did. That's what it said. <laughs> Heck yeah. I had no idea. How yeah. fun. Uh, yeah. Well, someone's getting archery lessons from me and I deeply appreciate it. We're going to, we're going to go out and have a good time. If you're in the oh, Southern yeah. California area, then uh, I'm your guy. And if, uh, if you're not, then I'll schedule a call with you. We'll get you equipment set up and uh, we'll get you grooving regardless. But how fun. Huh? <laughs> how funny. Buying archery contest lessons uh, in an orangutan benefit is something new. Congrats to uh, 9A6BBO. You're a lucky person for uh, <laughs> having some uh, archery lessons with Anthony. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Uh, this is really uh, amazing to see the amount of uh, support that came out tonight. It's uh, total, it's awesome. The retention total. rate too for the participants has been pretty consistent this entire uh, evening. It's been a three hour thing. Yeah. That's like the first King Kong movie with Jack Black. That was how long that was. So <laughs> I think this is more entertaining. I agree. It's <laughs> scary too. I think so too. I think so too. Uh, we've got... Um, Let's see, did we, we talked about the big donors already, haven't we? We did. Yeah, um, but a big did. thank you to all of them once again. And of course, big thank you to all of our VIP sponsors and all of the ticket holders and everyone here tonight. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, thank you to our volunteers for taking the time out of their days to make and participate in this event. And of course, for being here tonight and being a part of this. So right. thank we you. We have a few more. We have a little bit more time before we close it out, guys. So, you know, <laughs> hang with us because uh, I think on our little thing, we've got, uh, I think actually uh, John's going to talk a little bit about um, the new development of the website coming Beautiful. up. So maybe, John, are you ready? You've been, you've been quite quiet behind the scenes. He's doing a behind the scenes guy. There he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I'm I'm here. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So you guys give me the stage. I'm going to eat up your last 20 minutes, that's for sure. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good luck, John. Uh, yes, yeah, like I've never done public speaking. I'm, I don't know what I'm doing or any of that good stuff. Here, let's give this a go. All right, so back in the original days before we decided to move the Orangutan Republic Foundation site over to the, the Orangutan Project platform. Uh, this was the site that we had. Now we're looking at repurposing the content that's here and turning it into a .info site. And the goal here is initially to be able to provide just basic information about orangutans in the rainforest. But I've also got some bigger ideas, like providing a space that can be for members, which gives them a little more exclusive uh, content that they can go and see. But I also want to see if there's a way that I can provide some of the researchers with some tools that they can use. The benefit we get is that we can then add in 
extra information to assist them in their research. And we can also gather some statistics and metrics that we can go ahead and um, use and show on the uh, main site. So that's where we're headed. There's still some work to be done to shift the content from the old site to the new, and the new design is underway, but hasn't been completed yet. Now, in a couple of other little notes, now they've given me the stage. Uh, my way that I got introduced to orangutans was back when I was in England, my parents bought a subscription to what was then called the Eagle kind of educational comic. And I remember one article uh, that showed up, and I think it was the back page. Um, it was to do with people who were collecting animals for zoos. And it was done in a comic style. But I clearly remember the one where they captured this male orangutan, put him in the cage, but somehow left their tools within his reach. And he undid the cage and escaped. And that was what kind of brought the whole idea of, in my mind, of wanting to be uh, more involved. And then I picked up a copy of Reflections of Eden on the way to Singapore one day. And I decided that if I ever moved to Los Angeles, I would make contact with the Rangitown Foundation International, which I did. And that's where I met Dr. Gary. And when he decided to create his education outreach, I went with him uh, to be able to provide some support, which is how come we've known each other so long. Now, and one other minor little note of six degrees of separation, it turns out that the Don't Send Me a Card company is based out of Exeter in Devon in the United Kingdom. And I know the area well. That was my hometown. I actually know exactly where their offices happen to be. I could probably walk back there right now, having not been back to that part of the world in many years. So a bit about me, a bit about what we're going to be doing. Um, hopefully we can... Uh, bring some volunteers on board to help with the redesign on the .info site, and there'll be more of that available the next time we do one of these. Thank you. Now I've got to figure out where my controls went. So I can stop it. There we go. Come back, controls. Stop the share. Perfect. I love it. How cool. Uh, the website is something that uh, it gets lost in a lot of us. So there's somebody that actually knows what's going on. It's It's a treat. <laughs> I do what I can, you know, yeah, some new, there's some new tech, which seems to be a better way for us to be able to present the information. And I also want to make it really easy for folks to be able to interact with it, both updating and uh, using the information we put out there. Uh, some of the systems that are available, they, you kind of have to know the tech to make it work. I want to make it as simple as possible. I love it. And uh, people watching are definitely going to appreciate that. Yeah, but uh, hopefully. As we're wrapping up, <laughs> as we're wrapping up in the last few minutes here, uh, if you folks want to drop in the chat something that you particularly liked or something that you'd want to point out, uh, any particular part of the program, uh, it'd be uh, I hope to kind of see what you liked. Yeah, let us know some feedback. This is our uh, this is our URF's first ever no fuss fundraiser, so yeah. hopefully this is something that we could do a couple more times in the future and raise some more funds. Tonight was really successful. We raised over $1,200 for um, orangutans just from the fundraiser. So, I mean, just from the silent auction. So let's, uh, I think tonight was a success. What do you think, Anthony? What do you think, Gary? I think, I think you're right, but we, uh, it's more than 1,200. We got, we got 2,800. Is that right? Um, yeah, we got, we got more than that. We got 2,800 and some, and some change. So you want to put up the uh, durian meter to see where we're at? Are we are we caught up on that? Yeah. Durian meter. Yeah. Do you I have think that we're just shy of ten, but we're right in that in that fifth durian range. Yeah, I think um, Jason's been working diligently behind the scenes keeping that updated. Good. Is this the updated one, Jason? Yes, it's up to date. Okay. Perfect. 7,808 is our count currently. Just so another. What, $2,100, $2,200 will be there. Yeah. Certainly well, there's somebody out there who can write that big check. Anyone have uh, 2192 dollars to donate? Just just wondering. <laughs> You're getting your president <laughs> math skills ready. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gary said the number and I subtracted the eight. <laughs> oh, perfect. There we go. Well, I saw in the last like 30 seconds of the uh, auction, somebody donated $3 just to like finish off like a round number, which was super nice. Nice. Yeah, it was a nice like cathartic thing to see a, a number rounded off. It's perfect. 
you're a good person, whoever did that. <laughs> uh, well, perfect. Uh, other than that, if you folks have any questions, oh, we got something in the chat so far. It was a great program. Thank you all by an anonymous attendee. Ooh. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the feedback is, is much appreciated. We had some, we had some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to hear another uh, song from Hyla while we're kind of wrapping it up? Yeah, we've got yeah. time for it. If uh, Johnny, or you want to, you want to hear about my new book? Up to you, Gary. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if uh, maybe we can hold off on the book. Or maybe I can just show you real quickly what I've got. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don't be shy. I think we can uh, fit fit both in. Can we? Yeah. I'll do it real quick. I promise. Yeah, Hank, you guys can hang here with me as I as I show this here because you know uh, I do go back a ways. You know, almost uh, it's been forty nine years when I was in Sazak and I've lived in the jungles of Borneo and I work with Princess and Rini, and you know it's been people have been saying you know tell your story, tell your story. Well, I finally did the book and it is um, uh, actually now being uh, prepared for publication on the anniversary of my fiftieth year of working with orangutans. So it's called wow. Out of the Cage. Uh, and it's called My Half Century Journey from Curiosity to Concern for the Person of the Forest. So that will be, and it's actually, um, uh, you can pre-order it. It's, it's right there on the site. If you wanna go out and be somebody to pop out like you do it on, um, uh, you know, it's one of these uh, uh, websites where you throw in some money and you see what happens, right? Uh, right. But actually, I think it will come out. Um, my hope is it'll be out next year uh, on June 22nd. So, yeah, that's it. Um, just wanted to share that with you. I love it. Half a century of journey and curiosity of concern for the person in the forest. That's yeah. impressive, Gary. That's dedication. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm so uh, committed. It's because I want to make sure these orangutans have a you know, are here indefinitely. And the mm -hmm. kinds of things that we're doing now in the field, you know, getting people to understand what's happening, uh, the local people who, who are the stewards of the forests, getting them to move from things that are destructive to, to being protective. And then uh, at the same time, working with the government to secure large tracts of land uh, and forest to help orangutans have a protected area to live. Um, those are all critical things that we're doing. And, you know, you, both of you and everybody that's participating are, is part of this journey that we're taking together. So mine's only been 50 years. You know, I'll keep going as long as I can. Jack, you've got a few ahead of you and I have no doubt you're going to like soar, man. You're going to soar like an eagle. Absolutely. He's looking yeah. for his red haired protege. Yeah. Hey, Jack. I, I used so to have red hair in my beard. <laughs> All right. And uh, one, uh, one of the things I've been trying to do is hopefully we're going to get uh, Topher back uh, mm -hmm. if he gets close to some Wi-Fi, but he stepped, stepped away, he told me, and we'll see. Uh, we've got just a few more minutes left, so if he makes it, we'll, we'll hear from him. Otherwise, um, Becky also mentioned hear, that we can like, show from you. Jack, like I had a question um, how he got started, like what made him love orangutan so much. Oh. Yeah, a couple of years ago, my family used to travel the United States for my father's work because he's a nurse. And meanwhile, my mom taught me and she is a educator. She is a teacher. So she was the one who homeschooled me throughout mm -hmm. those years traveling around the U.S. So these experiences really shaped who I was as a person. And one of my favorite places that we lived was Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, especially because of the Memphis Zoo. I've always loved animals, but especially the Memphis Zoo was one of the most special places to me. Um, the best part of the Memphis Zoo was the orangutans, always. Ever since I first laid eyes on that little baby Rowan, I knew I had a special connection with them. I mean, I have red hair. That was the first thing that drew me to them, was my red hair. Orangutans are the only redheaded apes. I mean, I just had a natural love. It was meant to be with uh, with orangutans, but I think after that initial draw to them, I learned about how intelligent they were. I saw how intelligent they were. Because they were in the zoo, I was able to observe them each and every day. 
And when I say each and every day, I mean, my family pretty much went to the zoo each and every day. <laughs> it was, it was uh, a wonderful zoo and I'm so happy that I had the opportunity to go there. But after Lexi, the zookeeper there, who is also the illustrator of my book, and one of the biggest reasons why this book has done so well in just the two years that it's been released is because of the beautiful illustrations. So Lexi was the one to start my conservation journey and first inspire me to take action to help protect orangutans. And she also happened to be a very talented artist and she illustrated my children's book. So it's been an honor working with her over the years, ever since the beginning of my journey. And she's helped to mentor me along with Dr. Gary, of course. And both of them are such inspirations to me, as well as, of course, that first orangutan who I first fell in love with. So that's a long way of explaining I like orangutans a lot. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah, really interesting. What all do you like about orangutans? Like, are there certain, besides the red hair, yeah. other characteristics? Well, I think part of why I'm drawn to orangutans is because I feel a special relationship with them. So yes, they have red hair, but also they share, what is it, 97% of their DNA with us humans. I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's some of the most connected we are with any animals in the animal kingdom. Up there, it's not the top, but it is up there. So I feel such a connection with orangutans. And after learning that my redheaded cousins were disappearing uh, along with their homes and the biodiversity, the biodiversity of some of the most magical places on earth, I knew I needed to do something to help them. So ever since then, I've been working to help protect them through animal activism, public speaking, and being an educational YouTuber. Great, thanks so much, so interesting. Thank you. So I think uh, we have about five minutes left in the program. So how do you think we should wrap it up, Gary and Anthony? Uh, yeah, hey guys, I just got some great news. A $6,000 pledge has what? come in from the Green Hagen Foundation. I just wow. wanted to put it out there and see what our totals are. Wow. This is like amazing. You know, things come to Are you kidding away. me? No. Oh my goodness. I don't believe you, Gary. Awesome. I don't believe, Sorry, believe me. What is this foundation? Uh, what, Green what do Hagen they do? Foundation. Green Hagen Foundation. Okay. Wow. They How were very incredible. generous last year too. So, you know, wow. all I can say is that uh, I, I'm very, very thankful that this wow. has come in right at the very, very end. So maybe we can we can add that. What is what is that going to make our total, Jason? Definitely passes our 10,000 goal. That's for sure. Uh, wow. $13,808. How much was that? $13,808. Yeah, 13. 13. $13. Well, there you go, folks. That's, That's uh, a lot of durians. Yeah. Sisley is going to be very happy. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for joining us in our, uh, in our massively supportive night tonight. Um, orangutans are definitely going to be benefited from the funds that we've raised. So wow. Absolutely. And maybe we can have everybody else jump on the screen right now. I mean, yeah, let's get yeah. everyone in a big list. ball. Just join us together as we kind of wrap things up. Nikki and Jason, thank you, and John and Alexandra. And I thought Hardy was on there. You can you can pop on here too. He's been watching from Jakarta. He uh, oh yep, he's still at. Yeah, and we can have a like what do we call that uh, Hollywood Squares. <laughs> the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody who's been watching us and stay stuck, you know, stuck aboard while all these three hours. Uh, it's been great. Um, can't do it without volunteers. Like I said, this is a volunteer powered organization. This is what really moves me. I, I love giving my time to people who want to get engaged. This is a great platform. And there are not a lot of foundations like ours that do this. So, I, you know, you know Nikki, you've been great in putting together the, the calendar for the year we've got to start preparing for next year of course i know yeah you know, definitely. it's going and you know becky you're doing a wonderful job with the ed app i know that'll be ready for uh, towards the end of this yes. year or early next year keep that going and you know john you know you keep amazing me with your abilities so we'll get that new website up and running and 
Um, Alexandra, you, you know, you are a wonder at making chocolate and you're even better at doing <laughs> wildlife art. And I'm hoping to take her out in the jungles maybe in two years to do a wildlife artist kind of a tour, eco tour. That'd be great. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Something like that. And uh, I can't thank my son enough either. He's always showed up for things like this. Um, thanks, son. You really make me proud. You make me more proud, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, I just, I'm so surprised. Well, not surprised, but just so, you know, excited to be here with all these great people. Everybody's so talented, you know, Jack, Anthony, such great personalities and, you know, exceptional, you know. And Becky, you've done so much and so such a wonderful leader with education and you know you know how to do it right. So I think that's that's great. And yeah. you know, Tom, IT, wonderful. <laughs> David's music was great. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it was. Ditto to all of that, Nikki. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank I'm you so much for sticking around, everyone. We have some an amazing grouping of people here tonight as our panelists on this webinar. And thank you for sticking around till the end if you're still on right now. And uh, thank you for joining us. I know I've had a good time. I think we all have had a great time tonight and uh, I hope you have too. So thank you so much for joining us from home and I hope you've had no fuss tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, very good. Perfect. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. The, uh, the journey doesn't end here. If you want to uh, sign up for the membership, get into the community and, and join the panels next year, you know, it's up, it's up in the air and it's up to you. So uh, keep it coming and thank you so much for your support. And you can donate anytime on OURF's website. Sure. <laughs> Anybody else have something they'd like to say in closing? Feel free, feel free. I mean, First of all, people should also know that this recording will be available to our members and all those who actually bought a ticket but couldn't uh, be here tonight. We'll make sure that you get access to that video so you can kind of enjoy uh, the energy and the inspiration and the information and the entertainment that we've had. Uh, and I just like I said, I've been blown away by our MCs tonight. They've done a great job from the very beginning when we were just opening up and telling jokes, uh, some cheesy <laughs> ones, to, uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, guess oh, what, looks so like good. Topher, Topher White, <laughs> can, you, can you join us real quick? Oh, you Come really on in. Absolutely, yeah. hey, so much here, everybody. <laughs> you know what, howdy, howdy. Why, don't we, why don't we let you do your thing, man? We, we sure. can go hey. off screen. Yeah, go ahead, Topher. Hey, hey thanks for that, you Hey, appreciate it. All right, well, hey everyone, uh, so good to be here and, uh, and always uh, have so much uh, love and appreciation for OURF. Um, I started Rainforest Connection about 10 years ago. We are a nonprofit based in San Francisco, focusing on uh, deforestation and uh, biodiversity monitoring around the world. Um, and it was really Gary actually, who, who was one of our very, very first mentors and, and champions. Um, so it's really present. And I'm actually, that's, that's not a unique story. I'm sure there are quite a few people for uh, whom Gary is that. Um, but I do want to take a moment to uh, actually present a, a real quick little presentation on Reinforced Nation, which I think kind of explains so, 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 so much. Um, however, we're going to try and hide, hide these things. Okay. Um, hide the floating one. And there we go. Okay. So Reinforced Nation is, uh, is a, uh, yeah. Can you guys see my screen, everyone? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we, yeah, here we are. So it's, to, the best way to describe this is kind of a go into the rainforest itself, which I'm sure you've had a chance to have so far in this fundraiser. But we're going to talk about Indonesia. Uh, of course, that's the place where the rain tends to matter for this. But I'm going to listen into the sounds of the forest. Now, in this, uh, this soundscape, this is from Sumatra, um, West Sumatra. And you're going to hear birds. We, we, we don't hear, hear the sound hear. right now. We well, right. might have to You're select to share sounds. Uh, your audio mix. All right. Well, anyway, if you can't hear the sound, that's that's all right. These are uh, these are the sounds of chainsaws here at the bottom, and that's how I use the spectrogram to kind of pick things out. So it's a very powerful way to kind of listen to all these sounds of the forest, take the cacophony of what's there, and uh, and then pick things out. Um, to do this, uh, you know, obviously it's about stopping uh, trying to stop chainsaws. 
And, uh, and the way it sort of works is the moment a chainsaw goes off in the forest, the sound is picked up by a device up in the treetops. It's transmitted through the cloud to local people on the ground. In Indonesia, these are Perimbo, local rangers, who can jump on their motorcycles and get out there and stop loggers on the spot. Perfectly realistic rendition of exactly how that happens in the field. But it does happen in the field uh, quite a bit. Um, the way the system will kind of work is there's this app they have, the Rainforest Connection app for rangers for Perimbo. When a chainsaw goes off, they will get this alert that it's been happening based entirely on sound. And then they will be able to get on their, um, uh, get the motorcycles or trucks and get out there and stop it. This, of course, is the, is the hardest part. Um, around the world, we've been doing this many times. Here's an example of a, of, of a, a truck that's um, is waiting to be intercepted at the end of the road. Uh, careful you get up to share your screen. But before you do that, hit click the audio uh, button on the on the bottom. Share the audio. You need to share your screen. Ah uh, yes, okay. So um, audio button right here. Sharing audio. Normally it should be mixed, but uh, but we shall see. Uh, Hank, thanks everyone. Are you um you are able to see my screen, correct? Uh, not yet. No. We see you. you have been able to see my screen this whole time. Oh yeah. my goodness, you seem to be very excited about quite a few slides. That's quite, that's not quite the same. All right, well, thanks a lot for your patience here. Uh, let's get back, let's get back onto the screen. Just click, click the uh, share sound. Share sound. Got it. Okay, that's not the way to do it. Not the share. All these technical issues right at the end here. Thanks to everyone. All right. Question is, if I go here, can you hear the sounds of going? Can you hear them? Not yet, because when you're on the Zoom controls on the three dots, mm -hmm. there's you have to be sharing your screen, but on the three dots, there's a share sound button. And you can choose mono or stereo. Understood. Understood. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we will try that again then. <laughs> the joys of technology, you know. Indeed, indeed. Um, okay. In order for that to work, I'll have to put them back. It should be, yeah, come in here shortly. It's not there yet. Mm. All right. So. Right, so if you go to the three dots where it says more. Oh, you have to be mm -hmm. sharing to do that though. Okay. Separate. Thanks, everyone. No, Someone no, else can kind of rip for a while. Taking it back to Jack. Uh, all right. I'm just going to make. That's, yeah. And then there's a share, there's share computer sound. It's like um, four mm -hmm. or five from the bottom. There you go. All right. And now we will try that one. Now you can hide. And then when you play, we should hear it. All right. Um, so in Indonesia, are you guys able to hear these guys? Wow, that's weird. I mean, no, can hear can't hear it. Okay. Well, we can we can pretend like we hear it. Well, we heard yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we heard it during practice. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, okay. Well, let's let's take a quick stab at this. We're going to turn on original sound, which might help a bit. And we're going to try this one more time. I, I, uh, I, one thing I, I will say though is the, the sounds of the forest are worth it if you're able to listen in. So um, let's see if that's what happens. Okay. Uh, Can you hear now? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So this is West Sumatra in Indonesia. You may have heard some of this earlier. Here you're going to see gibbons, you're going to have uh, sounds of the birds, insects. But then at the bottom here, you're also going to see, hear the sounds of things up. You can understand how hard it is to hear the same dog. You see uh, these lines here at the bottom, uh, amongst the cacophony of uh, noise. And that's the reinforced connection. Uh, Tech Startup San Francisco is attempting to, uh, to, to pull out. So we are uh, listening to all these sounds, picking each, each one of them out, uh, isolating the chainsaws and then using technology and local partnerships on the ground. In Indonesia, it's a place called, uh, a bunch of people called the Primbo, uh, to be able to, uh, to go and stop it. How do we stop illegal logging? Well, as you can see here, the moment a chainsaw goes off in the forest, the sound is picked up by the device, transmitted through a local uh, cell phone network to local people there on the ground who can get an alert on their um, phone, 
and they jump on the motorcycles and get out there uh, to stop it on the spot. Um, the people, uh, it, you know, practice what this looks like is an app that we built, uh, like the one you see here, where they're also able to uh, review and alert the chainsaws themselves, make it feel like they know what they're going to do and get out there. Um, we've been doing this all over the world. Here's an example of, uh, of, of our work in, in Brazil, where uh, alerted a local tribe of Tempe uh, to be able to, to gather about 50 rangers to the end of this logging road. Then you get to the end of the logging road, they're there, they're able to uh, seize, the, uh, seize the equipment and burn the truck. Um, why does this matter, right? Around, around the world, uh, up to 90% of, of rainforest logging is done by illegal loggers. That includes Indonesia, that includes uh, all the places where orangutans are. Um, why does this matter? Well, illegal logging, of course, doesn't clear the entire forest, but, uh, but it's so profitable that they'll, they'll actually cut roads into the forest. That, that's true all over the world. And, uh, and once those roads are there, uh, it can lead to the wholesale destruction of the forest. It'll lead to smaller farms, to fires, to all sorts of uh, issues. If you can stop the illegal logging, it's so profitable, they'll cut a road right through the forest. If you can stop the, the, the illegal logging, you can stop the roads. If you can stop the roads, you can stop the wholesale destruction of the forest. Uh, and that's why people like this and people like this in uh, Indonesia, these, uh, these Perimbo there on the ground, are amongst the most important people for us to fight climate change and protect biodiversity uh, overall. If we can build tech tools for these people, they can have a very, very outsized effect on fighting climate change and protecting biodiversity, um, just by, by virtue of the fact that they're there to do it and they take responsibility for it. Uh, we've been doing this all over the world. We're now employed in 37 countries. Uh, quite a few of them are places where ranked ends are, are located. Um, and uh, and this, is, this has been one of those uh, technologies that's it's grown quite a bit since, uh, since Gary first championed us. Um, out of nowhere. And what this looks like on the ground, where you can see that, uh, that, that you have these people being able to stop it. This is one in Indonesia, where once again, they seized um, local logs and more uh, throughout Latin America. So this is one of those technologies that can be used uh, all over the place and certainly has been. But it goes well beyond just stopping loggers. Many of you out there love the sounds of the forest. Through the app, you can listen in to any one of these guardians you put up in the treetops, these, uh, these devices. Um, and you can listen in live uh, from all over the world. Uh, in practice, though, this is, goes well beyond just listening in, you know, for, for fun. As you heard before, there is a lot of biodiversity that's there in the forest. Then it ends up looking uh, something like this, where this is actually, again, from Sumatra, where you have insects, you have vehicles, gibbons, um, and we can sort of pick out the individual moments uh, with an AI, a neural network, and then map it all together. Imagine doing this over, over not just a, a minute of audio, but over uh, you know hours and days and weeks and months and years of uh, audio from the forest. Uh, this is the sort of way in which we do it. We build tools called Arbimon. Our entire science team internally is to be able to pick out the sounds of all these different animals. Um, what we're building is kind of a heat map of the entire uh, distribution of species around the forest. And it's not just about, of course, um, you know, the birds and the bees are the ones that are making noise. It's about uh, you know, being able to see what our animals are saying about each other, which ones indicate they're there. For example, when a tiger walks through the forest, it's not just uh, you know, the sound of the tiger that can alert us to that. It's the sound of other animals speaking about it. Um, and there's, uh, there's many examples of how even in uh, Indonesia, uh, where the forest is quite noisy, we can use the sounds of the animals to detect threats as well. The person walking through the forest, the soundscape itself will change in response. This ends up looking like uh, so much data that's there. This is a year of audio. So superimposed onto, onto, a, onto a graph. In this year of audio, and I, and I mean that, this, you can see the, the sunrise, the sunset, the changing of the seasons, the migration of species through an area. There's so much data baked into this, the sound of our living planet. And my favorite forest in the entire world is, are the forests of Sumatra, of all of the dozens and dozens of forests that, I, that I've been to. Um, the soundscape there is so unique, and, uh, and you can see it right here in the audio. It's the story of a year of the forest told in sound. Uh, we were in force action. We use that sound to protect, and uh, and I uh, I really thank OERF for all their support over the years, and uh, and for our ability to continue to do this. Um, the best is yet to come for sure. So thank you so much for your wow. time today. Wonderful, thank you. I mean, I'm really impressed to see how you've grown in in just what's okay. been what ten years. We started about ten years ago, right? That's right. Uh, it, uh, it's definitely been ten years. Feels like. It was like 50, but uh, yeah, it's been <laughs> across the planet. You know, I mean, but I still remember we all started with the Kickstarter campaign. And uh, like before we started the Kickstarter campaign, I was on my way to the dentist. And Gary just, uh, I just got a call from Gary. And he's like, I think it's a good idea. Um, you should do it. And I was like, thank you so much. <laughs>
Um, and then there he was. It's been a long journey. We, we actually spent time together in Sumatra. Um, you got me on that mm -hmm. harness and I was able to get up into a durian tree and literally eat mm -hmm. durian in a durian tree. Talk about the thrill of a lifetime. That, that, that like is like number one almost in my book. <laughs> well, um, it was, you know, definitely, definitely full circle for, for, for Gary. Yeah. Be up in a tree with durian. How awesome. That was an amazing presentation. The tech in that and the specifics of the way that the data is pulled out. It's so well visualized. Awesome job. Yeah. Well, I please everyone uh, feel free to to go check it out. There's unlimited amounts of data, including from uh, from Indonesia, including projects that OURF has, uh, has directly supported um, up in the north uh, up in the north of Sumatra. So um, all these tools are free and they're available for both scientists and just anyone who wants to listen in. Well, we're hoping to be able to join us, but in only these based new, on the issue. these new concessions. I think uh, Hardy was talking about that once we have control of it, once we we got the permit locked down. We'd like to mm -hmm. you know, use that technology out there. Please, uh, that would be really, really great. And again, there's so much there to 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 monitor beyond just threats. Um, Indonesia is, is such a hot, uh, like a, a, almost like a melting pot of, of amazing um, species that that are really hard to track. Like ones that are critical to climate change, like forest elephants, uh, to those that we sort of need for our own understanding of our own selves, like uh, like orangutans. It's sound that allows us to, to detect the ecology of how they all work together and how they how they kind of exist in their own space. Uh, and that's something that uh, we have to capture before it's lost. Right. Great. Thank you so much, Topher. Okay. And it looks Thank like you, we're everyone. about uh, 15 Thank minutes you. over our time. I guess we can uh, all jump back in again if you want and say say goodbye. I'll let the, our MCs uh, kind of. Um, yeah, once again. Up. Thank you all, everybody. Thank you to our volunteers who are joining us tonight and for your flexibility, especially with uh, the technology end of everything. Technology can be a hassle sometimes. So thank you for bearing with us through uh, all the difficulties and a special thank you to John for, uh, you know, pretty much yes. through all those. Yeah. You're welcome. Much, John. Being the logistical puppet master. Yeah. What? I'm glad thank it all worked. <laughs> Oh, yeah, perfectly. Yeah, that went well. Yeah, that went so smoothly, surprisingly. And uh, especially considering that's the first one, you know. Yeah. Wow. Great job, everybody. And thank you to our participants for sticking with us till the very end. And uh, we hope you had a good time. Absolutely, folks. Thank you so much. And if you want to continue the journey with the Rangatan Public Foundation, feel free to check out the website, uh, which is in the link below. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Everybody. Cheerio. All right. Have night. a great rest of your night. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. Good Thanksgiving. No, just you and me, Nikki. Oh, nobody. All right. Bye-bye.